And I am back with some snacks, some leftover Easter food. Spoop. Yeah, maybe spoop. Um, so this is the same stream as the previous one, as uh, chapter t the two finale. I just um, decided to do separate recordings for them instead of having them be the same recording on like the first game. Because it's like, well, it makes it easier to sort through then. And plus it gives me twice the amount of videos to upload. It makes them quicker to upload each. So we're going to jump right into chapter three. Hopefully I can get this done uh, fairly soon. I actually have a little image here kind of going over what my plans are for this game. Uh, it looks really messy. And here, here's a challenge for you. Don't get distracted by the Ganons while I describe it. So we're on the 17th right now, technically the 18th in some places. The, the goal for, the, for this week, and I'm only streaming tonight, tomorrow, and Tuesday, is to do, finish Chapter 3. Uh, I will be here on the 20th, but I am, that's prep night for PAX, so I'm not going to be able to stream. Uh, and I will be at PAX from Thursday until Monday. Coming home Monday night, uh, I'm not going to be able to stream that night. Absolutely not. I'm going to be way too tired and I have other stuff to do. Um, presumably, I'm going to come back on the 26th Tuesday. And the goal next week... <laughs> swab bricked. The goal next week is to... Uh, where's, where's me? There I am. Uh, the goal next week will be just to do Chapter 4. Nothing else. I'm not going to do Chapter 5. I'm just going to do Chapter 4. If I have time after finishing it... Uh, there are two new games coming out on both Thursday afternoon and Friday morning that I'm interested in streaming that are both short. So if I finish Chapter 4 uh, before the May 4th, I will go and uh, I will do them on stream. Well, I'll start them on stream. I may not finish them, but I'll finish them when I get back. Then same, same thing the week after. Uh, 4th, I'm going to be prepping, so I won't be able to stream. 5th to the 10th, I'm going to be away at a, at a, at a furry convention. That's, that's one day long in the PAX East. Uh, I'm not going to be streaming the 10th when I come back. I may not even stream the 11th, but after I come back, uh, we'll resume uh, TGAA 2, which, uh, I don't know why I said that. We'll, we'll resume Great Ace Attorney 2 as final chapter, and then do normal streams after that, including the two games that are going to come out here that I'll probably finish, and then move on to something else. So, it's a little packed. There's a lot going on. Uh, hopefully I can keep up with it. I'm hoping that I can finish Chapter 3 by Tuesday. Thankfully, I'm going to have a, tomorrow and, and Tuesday should be longer streams dedicated solely to Chapter 3, so... And we have about two and a half hours tonight to work on it, so yeah, there we go. Um, get that out of there. So yeah, that's 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 the schedule. Also, I just realized while I had this up, I was like highlighting the, the, the days with my mouse, and I realized that that doesn't show up on stream, so no one saw what I was doing. But yeah, essentially, three streams this week... Uh, possibly up to five streams next week, three streams the week after that, and then the week after that, it's going to be four, possibly three or four with normal streams afterwards. So that's the, that's, that's the rub there. Oh boy. All right, let's kick off chapter three. While I enjoy a nice post-Easter snack of salami and, and sopressat. And deviled eggs. Episode three, The Return of the Great Departed Soul. The grand end of the century great exhibition of London. Surely there is not a soul who has failed to hear of it. Wondrous new works of culture and industry from every corner of the globe had converged on Hyde Park. Welcoming over 50 million visitors. The last great hurrah of the century. Astonished and delighted people of all nations and ended on a note of resounding success. But as regards to the terrible catastrophe that occurred during the festivities, very few were aware my friend Mr. Herlock Sholmes had a hand in unraveling the matter. For from the shadows. Oh right, this is technically told from Iris's quote unquote point of view. The facts of the case. And like the centerpiece of the great exhibition, which rose high into the skies of Hyde Park. Sholmes's brilliant deductions, as clear and lofty as the Crystal Tower itself, brought the truth to light. I'm sure that's totally true and not actually going to rely on, on Naruhodo to figure this out at all. We're here at the showground of the great exhibition, which is absolutely packed with people. Packed with people. That that was a funny re way of reading that. All right. The weather is unusually fine, and we're about to witness a most extraordinary scientific experiment. 
ladies and gentlemen, the 20th century will see steam engines and electrical power dominate the world. Horse-drawn carts will give way to the motor car. Ah, uh, you're not wrong. Ships will sprout wings and take to the skies. Mm-hmm. How do you know all this? And today, we showcase even more advanced technology. A glimpse into the future. A world first. A demonstration of my super high voltage instantaneous kinesis machine. But what now? A man will literally be disassembled by a pulse of high voltage electricity and beamed to another location. Whereupon his body will be reassembled by reassembled calculations exactly as it was before. Yeah, but will his soul be intact? Also, are they straight up doing fucking teleportation? The hell? Caesar Zeppeli looking motherfucker here. Cheese. They bought they bought a four pack of like cheese samplers for Easter today, and uh, it is very good. There's pepper jack and sharp cheddar. Salami's good too. Mm mm mm. That's what people watching this on YouTube are gonna want me eating. Twenty second October nine thirty six a.m. Sholmes is sweet. Uno, Uno, are you listening? Your Pro Controller just farted. <laughs> if I have the Pro Controller on the table, whenever it rumbles, it does that. It, it, it like, makes a fart noise. Oh, sorry, um, what was that, Iris? Hmm. <laughs> what's the matter with you? You've been miles away all morning. You look like you're really enjoying that, that little platter of food you got there. Didn't you like what I cooked for breakfast? Yeah, I just said I did. No, no, that's not all. No, that's not it at all. Um, what were we talking about again? Today's paper, it's full of news about the Great Exhibition again. Ah, yes, the Great Exhibition. That's an exhibition that's rather great. I'd like to go sometime. You're really not your usual self today. You seem very down. Don't you agree, Hurley? Uh-oh. Oh, no, he's back in depressed mode. My favorite band, Depressed Mode. Mm, did you say something, Iris? Oh, gosh, you're even more down. Wow! Whoa, what the f When did you arrive, Mr. Norhodo? The fuck just happened there? You went through like four motions at once. I've been here for about half an hour already. We had breakfast together. What? Why didn't you mention it before? I, um, thought you might have known I was here. You know, because breakfast. Hmm. Iris is quite right. You're clearly lacking in vim. So much so that I didn't notice your presence. Thanks. Of course, I could deduce the reason perfectly well. I said to deduce. It's time to deduce the reason perfectly well with some simple observations. What? Let's see. Yes, for example, your tussled hair this morning with all its unruly spikes clearly can be deduced, therefore, that... Um, let me stop you there, Mr. Sholmes, because I think I can see where this is going. My hair always looks like this. It always has. Ever since we first met, in fact. Oh, really? How interesting. It just doesn't look like a haircut as such, I suppose. <laughs> Thanks again. Crossed my mind recently that it's been six months now. 
six months? Since I was forbidden working in, from working in court. So I've been wondering how much longer I'm going to be banned. Oh, right. He mentioned at the beginning, at the end of the last case, but we did, or the beginning of chapter two, but we haven't figured that why yet. Very interesting how his, how his story is kind of mirroring Phoenix Wright's in a very, very quick fashion. The whole losing his mentor, getting banned from court. It's, it's like a very rapid version of how Phoenix's story goes. Oh, well, that would explain why you seem rather glum. Don't you agree, Hurley? Hmm? Did you say something, Iris? Ah, uh, back to moping. What's the matter with Mr. Sholmes today? He's being a little bitch. Seems even more down the dumps than me. I know, and the Great Exhibition is opened. You'd think he'd be excited. Oh, why don't we all go see it together? I want to, of course I do, but I can't. Not for the time being. Why not? Why not? Why not? Because I'm a great detective, after all. So you're embroiled in some tricky case that you can't be distracted from? Is that it? I don't remember hearing that you're working on a case, Hurley. I suppose I should try to find out what's going on. Let, let him just get in a neutral position real quick. Ah, yes, this is where you note down ideas, isn't it, Iris? What's in the melting pot today? Mm, the blue carbuncle. Yes, it's from a case of death that Hurley solved ages ago, the death of a precious stone. A carbuncle's another name for a garnet. Oh, wait, we already had this one. We already read this. Yeah, they're usually red, no blue marks have ever been discovered. Blah, blah, blah. So who knows what the stolen gemstone actually was? Only Mr. Sholmes, and he's not going to tell you. Oh, I can't even leave. Oh, um, Mr. Sholmes, about this. Shh, not another word. Ah, yes, I see. This would be a collar for a breed of miniature canine with a particularly long neck. I've read this already, too. Mmm, cheese. Oh, wait, no. We, we read this, too. Damn it. You look at the inside, Iris is like, wow, that's really weird. That's how you that's how you write Cosmo in Japanese. Half a year ago now. I took on the defense of a young girl in a trial heard at the old Bailey. And it first seemed like a simple case of murder that took place at a London pawn brokery turned out to be one part of a much far-reaching, much more far-reaching plot that involved the British government. During the course of that trial, it was found that I made an unavoidable, yet at the same time, unforgivable mistake. Words fail me. This situation is utterly deplorable. Mr. Norohodo. Yes, my lord. I will decide upon your fate following the conclusion of this trial. Of course, my lord. In the end, I had my right to represent people in court revoked. I was told I had to spend my time in research and study, so that's what I've been doing. You have, haven't you, Runo? I forget what mistake he made. Reading all those big fat tomes about British law up in your room, and the notes about Sholmes' old cases. Brewing Iris' special blends of tea, fetching my daily bread for me. You become something of a manservant around here. Start on the silverware next, Master Naruhodo. <laughs> well, I'm thinking of going to ask the powers that be to reconsider. Specifically, Lord Strongheart. Oh yeah, Lord, Lord Strongfart. I remember him. At the British Supreme Court on Whitehall. Lord Strongheart? 
Ah, the delightful Lord Chief Justice. Not my favorite fellow. He's not mine either, but he's the man I have to talk to. He's the only one who could grant me permission for me to start working in the courts again. I came to Britain to become the best lawyer I could. And I can't do that just sitting around here. The whole of London has been swept up in this great exhibition, hasn't it? The most advanced science, the most modern technology, the finest works of art, and feats of engineering. For the next six months, our capital will be showcasing these things. And the world will be watching! Oh ho ho! So the implication is that this is 1899 now, and that the f that's when this takes place, because I know it's the 1890s. Oh, do you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to look down on London from one of those lovely balloons. Look down on... Do, do you mean those things... fly? Yes, of course. They fly high in the sky and don't even need wings to do it. All you need is hot air. So just put her, her, her lock in there and you're fine. But how? How does hot air have anything to do with flying? It makes no sense. I can't understand it at all. <clears throat> That's true of a lot of new scientific discoveries. Most people can't understand them at first. But in a hundred years' time, all these things will be just common knowledge. I suppose they might be. Mind you, some of the science being demonstrated seems very questionable. Something went wrong in the open experimentation stage yesterday, apparently. There was a huge explosion. Still, I wish I had seen it, though. I'd love to see how bad some of these scam experiments actually are. Says the innocent ten-year-old girl. See here, every page of this paper carries some article or other about the Great Exhibition. But the brighter things shine, the darker the shadows that they are cast behind them. Personally, I find myself drawn to the darkness, to the impenetrable. That is my proper atmosphere. Newspaper containing various articles about the world-leading science and technology on show at the Great Exhibition being held in London. Shadows cast behind. Is that a metaphorical way of referring to the back page of the paper? Every article on the front page is news about the Great Exhibition. Public experiments to demonstrate brand new scientific ideas, cultural exhibits from around the globe. It's also positive and hopeful about the coming central. Centrally? Century. I must go see it properly before too long. First test of matter transport device. Eyes of the world are on the crystal tower. Ten pages, one penny. I like this is 1890 and it's very blurred, so you can't tell what the what the final year is on it. So many glowing reports about the Great Exhibition and everything that's going on there. Other than this rather gloomy looking one that is. Wait, what? What's the matter, Runo? Lord Van Zeeps and Patriot cornered. Fiery ball gown sets dance hall ablaze. French court hears glass eye case. Ultimate gas company. Ruffians something to intimidate men of justice. The Reaper attacked? That's that's Lord Van Zeeks. This must be what Mr. Sholmes was talking about. Does he know any more, I wonder? Are you investigating a particularly tricky case at the moment, Mr. Sholmes? Hmm, you could say that, I suppose. Nothing more to add? That's not like you. What sort of case is it? Shh! Quiet, Mr. Narahodo. We must not discuss it here. You never know who might be listening. You're acting very strangely, Hurley. What do you mean, Iris? Well, usually... The more mysterious and complicated a case is, the better Hurley's mood. Ah. Is it really a case that's bothering you? Iris, please, you mustn't exercise your astute powers of observation and deduction on me without invitation. Remember what I always say. Put yourself in the shoes of the individual about whom you're making deductions. You say that, do you? You, Mr. Sholmes. Never mind, once I've had a cup of tea, I must make my way at once to the crime scene. Ah, that was a deep sigh. Deep. It's just in the paper that Lord Van Zeeks was attacked. That's terrible. You know the legend of the Reaper, of the Bailey, of course, don't you? 
Only too well, in fact. Yes, Prosecutor Barrack Van Zeeks. They say that if the Reaper isn't the Prosecutor in a case... They say if the Reaper is a pro... Oh my god. Hold on. They say that if the Reaper is the Prosecutor in a case, there's no salvation for whoever's in the dock. Even if the defendant is found not guilty. Once the Reaper has someone in his sights, one way or another, that person's time left on this Earth will be short. Yeah, we still never found out who lit the, the carriage that killed Mr. Um, McGilded on, uh, on fire. London's finest rogues always find ways around the law. They'll stop at nothing to secure an acquittal at trial. Falsifying evidence, paying sham witnesses, threatening jurors, bribing judges. But even such devious tactics as these cannot save them from the hand of the Reaper. As you've experienced yourself, haven't you, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, I've seen the Reaper's retribution at work. Many of these criminal rogues are reckless and quite unafraid to die. If a leader among their fraternity is seen to have been taken by the Reaper, retaliation like this does occur. Really, the capital has a never-ending supply of such scoundrels. So, do you mean... Lord Van Zeeks has been attacked like this before? This isn't the first time? He's quite an accomplished combatant, you know. He doesn't take these attacks lying down. Although... It seems that his assailants were armed with guns this time. My goodness, is, is he alright then? Is Lord Van Zeeks hurt? My dear fellow, how on earth would I know? Well, in the article here it says, as to what of Lord Van Zeeks and his condition, all will be revealed on tomorrow morning's edition. Ah, I see. Well, we shall have to be patient then. No, 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 I can't wait till tomorrow. In that case, you shall have to inquire with somebody in the know. But who? Dude, you're going, literally going to see Lord Strongheart right now. Mayhaps Long Strongheart. That's what I did last time. I kept calling him Long Strongheart. Well, I must be leaving now. Yes, understood. See you later, Mr. Sholmes. Ha! Ah, you really are a shameless liar sometimes, my dear fellow. What? You seek to put me off my guard and follow me, don't you? Well, you would be wasting your time. The thought hadn't crossed my mind, but now I'm wondering where you're going. <laughs> well then, see you later indeed. Listen to him. He's still laughing on his way out the door. Alright then, Runo. Let's get going. Oh, um, Iris. What are you wearing? I got changed to go to the Great Exhibition. You're going to take me. What? But, but I was just about to go to the Supreme Court. Oh, well, that sounds fun, too. You're going to take me there, then. Alright, fine. Just lower that weapon, please, would you? Of course, and after the Supreme Court, then we'll go to see the Great Exhibition. What shall I make for breakfast tomorrow, Runo? Why don't I surprise you? You know, I think a visit to this place could be a good idea. It's been six months now, hasn't it, since Susie went back to Japan? Susie? The office spade. Now that Mrs. Sato's gone, the shovelers aren't represented to correct me. Maybe I'll have to do it myself. Ah, you're a spader, are you, Runo? What, you want to battle it out? Alright, I'm not going to argue with a native English speaker. I want some kind of gun. Okay, that's all I need to do here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Alright, you ready to be chastised for being late? Usually these cases, these chapters start with you already having the case. We're the Supreme Court, Lord Chief Justice's office, 22nd of October. So it's been about... Oh. <laughs> he literally starts saying, it's been about six months now since I was last here. But something's never changed, like the sense of foreboding I always seem to feel in this place. The 
Doesn't seem to be bothering Iris at all, though. She's happily reading over there. Oh, I love this place. I always find so many interesting books here. Of course, I was forgetting that you've been here before. The time we came here six months ago. When Sasato-san was given the news that she was to return to Japan. Ah, I understand you wish to speak with me. Oh, L Lord Strongheart. I trust you've been c keeping well? Let's see, since you arrived and requested an audience, it's been four hours, 32 minutes, and... 26 seconds. I've kept you waiting a while. My apologies. Oh no, not at all. I like nothing more than standing around staring into space. Good to know. Good to know that it doesn't appear to bother him, at least. Male Strongheart, Lord Chief Justice of London. He's the man who allowed me to start practicing as a defense lawyer when I arrived in Britain as a student. We need only savor the air for a moment in this grand office to understand his preeminent status. As you will be aware, the Great Exhibition of London is now underway at last. We're extremely busy as a result, policing the grounds, guarding the new technologies, dealing with the petty crime, and furthermore, as of next month, we shall open the International Forensic Science Symposium. Oh, I've not heard about that. Investigating authorities from 40 countries around the globe will be taking part, including from your own land. Forensic science is the future. The world must embrace it. As with the hosting nation, I have much to do. And it is my highest priority. If others must wait for my attention as a result, so be it. Well, it's nice to know where I stand. So, you wish to consult with me? Of course, I can very well imagine what this is about. Uh, well, um, thank you for the agreeing to this meeting, my lord. Not to be allowed to start working as a defense lawyer again in court. That's what brought me here today. But actually, there's something else playing on my mind as it happens. Bruno, just take a deep breath and come out with it. By the way, Lord Strongheart, about this... Symbol of a defense lawyer in the Jap Japanese judiciary. Oh, I, I didn't expect you'd know that. We never expect accept foreign uh, we never accept foreign students before first researching the legal systems of their home countries. But such trinkets are merely for show. The only true measure of your worth is your performance in court. Yes, right. Oh, that reminds me, have you seen this? The reports of overwhelming success of the Great Exhibition? Of course. No, no, not that. The story on the back page. What story? Reaper attacked. Ah, that. You've enjoyed some victories in court against my number one prosecutor, have you not? Poor Mr. Reaper. What happened to him? He... he wasn't killed, was he? There's no need for concern. Lord Van Zeeks would not be so easily dispatched, I assure you. Can you tell us what happened? I'd really love to know. Very well. If it interests you. It does, strangely. actually came by here today to ask for your permission. Go on. Six months ago, my right to work in court as a lawyer was revoked, and I was told to spend my time studying. Obviously, I'm very sorry for what happened, but the thing is, it made me understand what it really means to defend somebody under the rules of a foreign justice system. And I desperately want to have another go. Please, permit me to enter the courtroom again. Mr. Narahodo. yes Ugh, here it comes. I'm sure you haven't forgotten your position here, have you? At best, you are a substitute for your compatriot. This was never your intended role. Well, that's true. Uh, the Japanese government actually sent my best friend on the study tour, not me. It should have been Kazuma. 
He was so determined to bring change to our own justice system at home. That was his calling. If that tragic accident hadn't happened, I wouldn't be here in this office now. Dude, this guy looks like he would truly kick everyone's ass. Yeah, he would. He's big, tall, and he sticks to very strict schedules. Mr. Osogi was my best friend, you see. That's why I can't leave it unfinished. I have to fulfill his calling for him. Hmm, his calling, you say. Has it never occurred to you that perhaps you know nothing of his true calling? Sorry? The mission with which you, the, uh, the mission with which that young law student was charged. What do you suppose it really was? W what do you mean? Mission? He's not making any sense. Never mind. I've read all the reports you've submitted over the past six months. It's clear to me that you regret your actions and have been studying and have been studiously obeying your revised instructions. D do you mean... As of this moment, I reinstate your license to practice law here in Great Britain. Wow, that was quick and easy. They, so, that, so that just existed as an excuse as to why there hasn't been a case in six months. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. That's wonderful news, Runo. In fact, I believe I have the perfect case to mark your comeback. Oh no. Cases he assigns to me are usually not good. Oh man, I'm sorry. Body's making a lot of noises that I don't want to. I don't want to show up on stream. That's how you know I've eaten too much today. And I'm gonna continue to eat. Mm -mm -mm. A curious affair. You'll consider it, I hope. Of course. Please tell me more. You described it as a curious affair. Yes, that's right. I believe it was reported in the press. Are you aware that there was a serious accident at the Great Exhibition yesterday? Oh, no. Yes, I read about it. A professor from Germany tried to carry out a crazy experiment. Let me see. How is it described? Super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, I think. Instantaneous kinesis? As in moving things with a click of the fingers? That's right. It's just what my herbal blends need. A dash of devil may care. Whatever this serious accident was, it's clearly captured Iris' imagination. It's an unfortunate business. A large explosion engulfed the public experimentation stage, and a man lost his life. A certain Mr. Odie Asman. An inventor and a well-known figure in society. Odie Asman. Odie Asman? Odie Asman. I'm trying to figure out what the reference there. Whenever I hear Odie, I just think of Odie Oldbright from Live Alive. Oh man, that remake is coming out in, in like four months. Can't wait. Not four months, three months, excuse me. It's coming out July 22nd. That's, uh, that's three months and four days from now. Awesome. Awesome to the max. Alright, uh, large explosion. A, a man died? No, a man, duh. My sister. The man responsible for the experiment was Professor Albert Hairbrain. Well, that's that's an obvious one there. He was detained immediately after the incident and is due to appear in court tomorrow. Cube. On the charge of murder. What? Murder? Dun dun! If you intend to take his defense, you should hurry to meet with him at the prison. There is very little time left for you to carry out any kind of investigation. The great exhibition, a scientific experiment gone wrong, and murder? I still feel out of my death before I've even started, but still. We should go to the prison straight away then, and try to meet with this German professor. Don't you think? Definitely. Ah uh, yes, one more thing about the case. There's a connection with our mutual acquaintance, the Reaper. Oh, with Lord Van Zeeks. How? Of 
Fortunately, Lord Van Zeeks emerged from the attack unscathed. Street ruffians are no match for that man. He's a very capable fighter. But that's incredible. They were armed with guns. Why was he attacked, though? Do we know? It's related to the events that occurred a month ago. A leader of one of the capital's criminal organizations was indicted and prosecuted by Van Zeeks. But the man was acquitted. I have no doubt large sums of money were involved behind the scenes. Large sums of money? A deplorable situation. Members of the jury were bribed, it seems. However, despite winning his freedom, the man in question met a dramatic end yesterday. But, but you're not suggesting that was the work of the Reaper, surely? The victim's henchmen certainly seem to think so. He was a man by the name of Asman, Mr. Odie Asman. Did you say Asmin? Oh man, oh this is really good now. These pieces are all falling into place here. That's the man who died in the big explosion at the Great Exhibition. Yes, known publicly as an investor, but in reality, Asman, the head of a significant criminal organization. Unbelievable. I wonder, could I ask you something, Lord Strongheart? Try me. Why do you use Lord Van Zeeks as a prosecutor? All the criminals who manage to get off in court then meet with mysterious ends outside the courtroom. And fearful of that fate, they seek to strike at Lord Van Zeeks first. I know there's no evidence that he actually is the Reaper in that sense, but still, something's clearly going on here. I have Van Zeeks work for the prosecution service for two reasons. Firstly, the man is the best prosecutor in the capital, bar none. And secondly, any deaths of criminals that have occurred outside the courtroom following his trials are nothing to do with him. But that doesn't make any sense. How can you explain the way so many have died if not by somebody else's hand? Van Zeeks may have earned himself the moniker of the Reaper, but he is no killer. So he will continue to prosecute on behalf of the Crown. Unless he wishes otherwise, of course. All sorts of conferences have been taking place around the world to coincide with the Great Exhibition. And next month, the largest and most important of them all will take place at last. The International Forensic Science Symposium. It does seem as though the criminal investigation needs to embrace scientific methods, doesn't it? Exactly. Ah! London, the global epicenter of culture, science, and wealth, now has a population exceeding 6 million. Sadly, crime in the capital is growing at a similarly startling rate. So it's imperative. It's imperative. So it's imperative that we use the latest scientific methods to investigate and resolve cases as efficiently as possible, which is what's known as forensic e science, isn't it? Exactly. The future of policing. Ah. Regrettably, however, Britain is currently dragging its feet when it comes to the adoption of forensic methods. Oh dear, that's alarming. Exactly! It's extremely alarming! Ah! If I were Her Majesty's Attorney General, you could be sure. The numbers of crimes committed and resolved in London would be very different to the current figures. And I could cite 12 solid arguments and 223 individual reasons to support my claim. Sorry? By way of apology for keeping you waiting earlier, I shall detail every one now. What?! Oh, how fascinating! It all began 15 years ago. I was... Oh, Lord. It's like Paper Mario. And that more or less sums up my feelings on the matter. In the simplest of terms, of course. Essentially, to formally establish a forensic investigation division within Scotland Yard. That is my mission. Oh, um, right. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, sorry, I started eating. It took so long. Exactly. Wonderful is precisely what it'll be. Iris isn't paying attention at all. She's got her nose in another book now.
Oh, is it over? Did you learn anything useful? I actually drifted off for the most part. He's surprisingly ardent about forensic science. <clears throat> well, I must be leaving for my next engagement. I'm already 11 hours and 16 minutes late. My colleagues may be starting to fidget. 11 hours late? That's quite something. That meeting had already started when I arrived back here for this engagement with you. So lateness was inevitable. Time stops for no man. I'm sure it stopped for me during those 12 solid arguments and 223 reasons. Oh yes, where would I find Lord Van Zeeks now? I would assume he's at his office. Right, I'll go and ask him about the attack in person. I want to get this straight from the horse's mouth. Away with you now. I'm leaving Professor Airbrain's defense entirely in your hands. Turned in work. God, you hate math. Oh man. <clears throat> hey, at least it's done. And now you've you've outmathed yourself. Uh, of course, yes. Thank you very much, my lord. A new location has been added. Private office of Lord Barrack von Zeeks within the prosecutor's office building. I haven't been in this place yet. Don't forget to take me when you go. <laughs> Prosecutor's office. Oh, so this is the legendary Reaper's office? Yes, it appears so. Urgh, it sends a chill down your spine, doesn't it? What an amazing, deathly atmosphere. Oh, was that? That hooded figure was so still I hadn't noticed his or her presence. I wonder who it is. What are you doing here? Ah! He's as unwelcoming as I thought he'd be. Actually, maybe even more so. Oh, I, um... Not to see your well. I am. There's a spot for booze and cups. Wait, really? He does? I didn't notice. Oh, you mean on the left. Oh, okay. Yeah, he has a... He has a... Yeah, I guess it makes sense that he has a ton of cups since he breaks a million of them every trial. So, who's the person over by the wall being punished for something or other? No punishment is taking place here. Oh. That's my apprentice. And he's sitting there of his own free will. I didn't know you had an apprentice. Must be the same person who was pictured in the newspaper. He's very able in combat. A requisite skill for anyone under my tutelage. Are you referring to the attack on the Reaper that was reported in the papers? The Reaper? I'd be interested to know the Reaper's true identity myself. Assuming, that is, such a fabled fiend genuinely inhabits our great courtrooms. Um, I know you've seen this around my arm before, but... What is it exactly? It's the mark of a defense lawyer, in Japan at least. And what's your reason for showing it to a British prosecutor? Oh, well... I don't know, really. I can understand, at least. There's merit in reminding yourself of who helped you become what you are today. Oh. But that's a personal matter. Something you may want to keep close at all times. Not something to flaunt. No, I suppose not. And thank you for understanding, though. Lord Van Zeeks, about the article in this paper... Ah, uh, yes, it seems there was a reporter nearby when that little skirmish took place. <clears throat> I had no idea I'd be photographed. It was careless of me. I calm the fuck down, dude, yeah. Looks as though it was taken after the people who attacked you ran run away, though. Rest assured, the police have already apprehended every last one of them. But there's someone else fighting alongside you, it seems. I think it's the same man who's sitting over there as we speak, isn't it? Look at all the wine he's got in the walls. Look how many caskets he's got. 
Caskets, casks of wine. Not casket. God, if those were if there were dead bodies in there, that'd be a twist. As I mentioned already, he's my apprentice. Perhaps you could tell us a little more about him. Nothing particular of note. Loves to get hammered, yeah. Lord Van Zeek's desk. Look, it's so stylish. And that's a marble chess set behind it. Chess. That's the Western version of our Japanese shogi game, isn't it? You know, I'm actually quite good at shogi problems. Oh, really? You probably like chess problems in that case. I'd love to challenge Lord Van Zeek sometime. To a bout of shogi problems. If you only really want to challenge yourself, you can always do that on your own at home. Look at that fine collection of hallowed chalices and bottles neatly lined up there. My hallowed bottles are filled with the essence of the finest grapes from the finest vineyards I visit. And I personally oversee these chalices being made by the finest crystal craftsmen in the world. And yet you throw them around in court like they were worthless. Yes, because this imbecile is so unimaginably and unrepeatedly wide of the mark sometimes. Oh! Oh! Before you open your mouth next time, you should consider the poor artisans whose work you defile. So, it's my fault? Silly me, how could I ever have thought otherwise? Oh, look, it's a scale model of the Great Exhibition Showground. Oh, no, he obviously paid to make them. It's just funny that... He... It's funny that they acknowledge that he has to keep ordering more of them because he's frustrated with uh, Naruhodo. That's amazing. I wonder why it's here. Perhaps he made it to take his mind off the sadness of being too busy to attend in person? Or perhaps he's too embarrassed to queue up for a ticket. Surely it's obvious that I'm using it as an investigative aid. Ah! You Nipponese have no business painting others as overly reserved. Hey? Ugh, I really didn't think he'd overhear that. Why is there a guy on the ground there? Wait, what? Oops. Shit, I do that. Oh, huh, interesting. Oh, maybe that's because it's the crime scene. Because look, we have the, um... We have the mat, we have the teleportation device over here. And then over here we have the guy dead, uh, presumably at the Crystal Tower. That portrait really dominates the room, doesn't it? It's a very majestic outfit and pose, but sadly, whoever painted it didn't do a very good job of capturing Lord Van Zeek's facial features. Yes, you're right. I mean, it's not far off, but the artist has exaggerated his subject's handsomeness, I think. Ah, that reminds me. I heard Emperor Napoleon of France ordered artists to make him look more attractive when they painted him. How vain. That's really not an attractive quality in a person, is it? That portrait does not depict me. Surely that's immediately obvious. Oh, then who is it? There's bats up here. Oh my god. Ah! They were bats! Yes, the Reaper's familiars, I expect. But what about the mute man in the dark cloak? I thought he was the familiar. Just not the flying kind. He must be a dear friend of Mr. Reaper, then. The familiar idea is more likely. Scary, though, either way. Look at all those ancient casks lining the wall there. Casks in the Reaper's chamber. 
Or are they caskets? Hey, I just made that mistake earlier. You you don't think all those p people who escaped c c conviction and court are lying inside them d dead, do you? What ridiculous notions are going through your head, man? This is my collection of fine vintages. Oh, yes, of course. Thank you for clearing that up. Bruno and I were just amusing to ourselves. Don't mind us, Mr. Reaper. I wouldn't if you hadn't invited yourselves to my office to talk nonsense within my earshot. It looks like a punishment to me. I've never seen someone sitting like that before. He hasn't moved a muscle since we arrived. Think perhaps he's dead? If he was dead, Runo, he wouldn't be sitting up, would he? Well, anyway, dead or alive, he's not overly approachable, is he? I don't think he's going to talk to us. He's not dead. Lord Strongheart said that the assault last night was some sort of revenge attack. True. Carried out by the henchmen of Odie Asmund's criminal organization. The investigation meant their arrests were imminent. Presumably some had hoped to kill me before that happened. Odie Asmund. He's always masqueraded as one of London's most powerful financiers. A global investor. But his enormous wealth came to him by underhand means, via his criminal activities. And he used that money to buy himself a verdict of not guilty when he found himself in court, didn't he? Being prosecuted by you, Mr. Reaper. But the man got his comeuppance in the end. Yesterday, in fact, in extraordinary circumstances, it was a most unusual cause of death. Oh, I, I know about that. It was a super high voltage instantaneous kinesis gone wrong. Mr. Asmund died when the demonstration on the public experimentation stage ended in an enormous explosion. <sighs> Enormous explosion. Correct. And you think I have some kind of divine ability to cause an accident like that to happen, do you? Well, no, that does seem a little far-fetched. If this man really is the fabled Reaper, then he has to be innocent of this particular death, at least. It's strange how this was worked out, isn't it, Runo? I mean, what with you taking on the Professor's defense for the trial tomorrow? What? You're going to be defending him? Oh, yes, that's right. Though I barely know the man's name yet, to be honest. Albert. Albert Harebrain. That's right. Do you know him by any chance? Of course. He's a contemporary of mine. We were at university together. You're... What?! I understood that Professor Hairbrain was from Germany, though. Hairbrain's from a respectable British family. After graduating from the University of London, he moved to Germany to carry out research, that's all. So you were students together. I was in the Faculty of Law, of course, and he in the Science, so our paths rarely crossed. But curiously, we got along, though I've not met him since my university days. Uh, I certainly didn't expect our next encounter to take this form. And with you of all people representing him. Ah, uh, only if I make it out of this office alive. He's actually been charged with murder, it seems. Yes, I know. Because the prosecution will be handled by me. By you? But, but you made it sound as if you and the professor had been friends. We are friends, it's true. Then why would you do this? If the Reaper is the prosecutor, there's nothing anyone could do to save him. He's doomed! What's Lord Van Zeek's thinking? What do you mean by what you said before? If you'd like to know the Reaper's true identity, does that mean... I'm a crown prosecutor and a mortal like any other. I'm no demigod. But they've all died, haven't they? The people you've prosecuted, I mean. Whether or not the trial ended in a conviction or an acquittal. Those I prosecute are the vilest wretches of our society. People who without question deserve to be found guilty. The world is a better place without them. 
But... That's not true of Mr. Natsume, for example. He wasn't a vile wretch at all. Nor was Ginny. In fact, she's ever so hardworking now. I can't deny that since I encountered you, things have taken a turn. But the point is this. If any of those vile wretches that escaped justice subsequently died in mysterious circumstances, it was at the hand of their own kind. It's not my work. Lord Strongheart said the same. He believes you're not involved in any way. But you were attacked by those ruffians because it's they believe it's true. The fact is, since people started to call me the Reaper of the Bailey, the number of serious crimes in the capital has dropped substantially. Oh. It would appear that even the most hardened criminals can be made fearful for their lives. Do you mean to say... I mean to say that if my pseudonym serves a useful purpose, I adopt it gladly, and with honor. But it's putting you in danger, you could be killed! If that is my fate, let God decide. Lord Van Zeeks. That calls for a deviled egg. Mmm. He's in my tutelage to become a prosecutor. So you could say he's my apprentice, I suppose. But but he pretty, yeah. He he is pretty. Ah, like you are to Hurley then, Runo. I don't remember taking an apprenticeship with great detective. He's currently compiling a report about last night's attack. It looks like he's wearing some kind of mask. On Lord Strongheart's orders. Nobody knows the man's face, so indeed his identity. How would you agree to, agree to take on such a clearly suspicious individual? Lord Strongheart's orders again. He's not one for meaningless follies. There will be a good reason for his actions. I hope you're right. Ah! Ah! The task is complete. Good. In that case, you can collate all the briefs. Nice to meet you. And away he goes. Back to work again. That was really strange, though. I've never met the man before. I didn't even know he existed, and yet... Somehow it didn't feel like our first encounter. Don't bother trying to converse with him. He says nothing to anybody from outside this office. Lord Strongheart has strictly forbidden it. Oh, I see. Why are you so interested in my apprentice anyway? Hmm? Oh no, I mean... Sorry, I didn't mean to... The way he stood there so casually, yet with that flawless posture... It... it couldn't be. Ah, uh, yes, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Oh, what's that? That Nipponese man, is he faring well? Sorry? The one who arrested twice in succession six months ago, with the stoop and the mustache and the jitters. Ah, Mr. Natsume, you mean? I'm not sure he'd be very pleased to find out you identified him from that list, Runo. He's fine, thank you. In fact, I received a letter from him by International Post only the other day. I see. Well, I think we can end our discussion there, don't you? There's little time left before tomorrow's trial. I advise you to spend it investigating the case. Yes, thank you for the advice. And for the conversation. I can't believe he's asking after Soseki-san. After a Nipponese. I'm not sure whether to feel happy about that or worried. Never imagined that Mr. Reaper would be friends with a mad scientist, did you? That's a turn up for the books. A mad scientist? Ah, you mean Professor Hairbrain? 
Yes, it might be worth questioning the professor about his relationship with Lord Van Zeeks, I think. The Prince of Lord Van Zeeks, whose face is always covered by a mask. He is the heir of a completely unassailable man. Hmm. Huh. I feel like he could be Herlock, maybe? But, like, why? Have we met someone else like that before, though? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, cell 11. We got bumped up two cells. The warden said cell 11. That's this one. Oh, there's someone curled up in a ball in the back corner. Look. What's his name again? Professor Albert Hairbrain, wasn't it? Um, excuse me, Professor Hairbrain. Yeah, I know just the voice to give this guy. Who are you? I'm Ryanosuke Narohodo. I'm a defense lawyer. A lawyer? Ah, uh, was it something I said? A, a lawyer, you say? W w would you be here uh, about the experiment? Are you going to defend my hypothesis? Your hypothesis? Sorry, I don't... Yesterday's demonstration! That demonstration was... The magnificent demonstration was... It was an all-out success by anyone's calculations! But, 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 but despite that... No one listens! No lawyer believes in the science! Once explained, they all leave at high velocity! Ah... Uh... That's probably not a good time to mention that your zeal made my concentration... Your zeal made my concentration leave for a while, too. Ah, uh, fascinating, yes! In Japan, where I come from, it's the symbol of a defense lawyer. Wearing it is very bracing, I find. Hmm, your words make some sense to me, but they are entirely illogical. What do you mean? Well, for example, I find this white laboratory coat that I wear for my work very every, very bracing, too. However, in my case, there is perfectly logical reason for that feeling. Oh, really? What is it? I purchased the wrong size by mistake. This one is too small for me. The sleeves especially are extremely bracing. I could barely move my wrists. That's what you call logical, is it? Of course, it's entirely logical. That's science, Mr. Naruhodo. Uh, how could this have happened? He must feel awful. As well as a man losing his life, the Crystal Tower was greatly damaged, too. I... I know what happened. It must have been that. That? The day before the demonstration, I had my usual meal of Frankfurters at the hotel restaurant. When I paid the bill, they gave me three shillings too much in change. But instead of saying anything, I just slipped the coins into my pocket. They're still there now. It's divine retribution for my wrongdoing. That's what this is. For a scientist, he has some very illogical anecdotes. Long and illogical. Um, you mentioned the You mentioned the demonstration yesterday. The papers have called it spectacular failure. After all, a man died in the explosion, didn't he? Yes, you could interpret the results that way if you really wanted to. Well, I, I suppose in the strictest sense. The experiment was a failure, but at the same time, it was a great success. You've lost me. I saw it with my own eyes. Right there in front of me, Mr. Asman was spontaneously disassembled. Until then, everyone was, everything was going exactly as my calculations had predicted. At that point, he should have been beamed to the Crystal Tower by instantaneous kinesis. However, 
The machine exploded and Mr. Asman, in fact, perished. Yes, I cannot deny that part of the experiment was a failure. So what you're really saying is the large explosion that killed Mr. Asman was an accident, correct? But the bigwigs had you arrested? Oh no. But the bigwigs had you arrested on suspicion of murder. I was responsible for a man's death. That is the immutable truth here. And for that, I wish to be punished. At once. B but Murder? Never in a million years. It was an accident. Simply an accident. I see. Early and I were talking this morning, you know. He said the situation would change completely depending on whether or not it was treated as an accident. Or murder. How exactly? Well, if it really was an accident, then the professor's machine would be kept in protective custody. On what grounds? Ah, yes, it's newly established here in Britain. The Special Dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. That one passed me by. But well, if the case is treated as a murder, and they'll say my machine was then they'll say my machine was the murder weapon, and they'll be able to pour over it as much as they like. If they examine it in detail, they'll find out how it's made, and then. They'll be able to copy my idea. My precious hypothesis would be stolen. The machine must be protected from that at all costs. That's why it's imperative that this whole incident is shown to be an accident in tomorrow's trial. Ah, I see now. So in short, there was a terrible accident at the Great Exhibition Showground yesterday. Yes! Or rather, no. The devil's in the details. Strictly speaking, there was a terrible explosion. Sounds the same to me. You were demonstrating super high voltage instantaneous kinesis, weren't you? Or SHVIK for short. Shavik. Humans, like all matter, are made up of particles that are held together by electrical bonds. So it must be possible, using a sufficiently high voltage, to break those bombs and bonds and beam the particles through space. That's that's it in a nutshell. That's my idea, you see. That's my amazing hypothesis. Gosh, that's unimaginably high-level science, or HLS for short. Oh, but dare to imagine it. Dare to dream of such incredible technology. Just think, one moment I could be here in this cell, and the next, I could be at the Great Exhibition again. Well, yes, that would be incredible. And the next in the mere blink of an eye, I could be at a great Parisian theater, say. The possibilities are endless. The whole of our vast planet would be within reach. So no more hiding in wardrobes on rocky seas for 50 days? That's a reference to when he was coming over uh, in the at the beginning of the last game. Because he was a stowaway, so he's hiding in Cosmo's uh, closet. Hmm. I don't really see it like that. What do you mean, Iris? If you could travel anywhere in the world instantly, the planet wouldn't really seem vast anymore, would it? I think it would feel like it had shrunk. My word, that's exactly right! Where'd you get that salami? Mm -mm -mm. What are the implications? What does this mean? Oops! That's got Professor Bunny Brain really worried by the look of it. Clearly, this is another case of just because you can doesn't mean you should, I suppose. The point is, my calculations are flawless. The science works! But without a practical demonstration, it means nothing! And that's always the fly in the ointment. Because practical demonstrations cost a lot of money. Money that young scientists like you don't have. That's... that's exactly it, yes. Charlie's always complaining about it. He says the government should invest more in science. Well, anyway, I bumped into him at the right time. I met the well-known investor, Mr. Asman. The victim who died in yesterday's terrible accident, you mean? The full name of the victim who died in yesterday's accident was Mr. Odie Asman, wasn't it? What exactly was your relationship with the man? He first visited me in my laboratory in Germany a year ago now. He said he wanted to invest in my immaculate hypothesis. I thanked my lucky stars. I see. So you hadn't really known each other until then. 
Money for scientific research. I'm so envious. As far as I was concerned, the man was an angel. Oh, really? An archangel, even! He was prepared to fund a practical demonstration of my hypothesis for presentation at the Great Exhibition. And if that went well, I could expect additional financial support for my research from the British government. Mr. Asman provided me with money and an exceptional engineer. He proceeded to make- he procured a ma uh, he produced a machine to my precise specifications. But then your dreams were blown to dust in one enormous explosion. As you could see, I owed everything to Mr. Asman. I would never, ever have thought of taking the man's life. Well, he seems genuine enough. I don't think he's lying. Odie Asman, the man who perished in the explosion at the experimental stage, he was Professor Hairbrain's financial backer and the boss of a large criminal organization. Albert Hairbrain, a scientist who invented a machine to demonstrate super high. Uh, sh sh shviv. Not Shviv, Shvik. Um, he's the defendant in this case and a friend of Lord Van Zeke's, apparently. Who are you, Masked Man? This guy is really cute. <laughs> he's, he's cute in a nerdy way. I understand Lord Van Zeke's is a friend of yours from your university days? Yes, that's right. He was studying law whilst I was studying science. What was he like back then? Hmm, a good question. Unassuming, gentlemanly, an all-around nice fella, really. <laughs> You're gonna shut now. Shush. Hey, it's okay. Nerds are cute. Sorry, I, I think you misheard me. Personally, I don't really go for, uh... My taste in men doesn't... Like, I, I, you know what? Let's not go into this. My taste in men is very, uh... Very specific. I'm one of those... I'm one of those bisexual people. I'm like, oh yeah, girl, gr women, women are great, all women are great, and then it's like men, it's like, mm, I don't know, you gotta meet specific uh, requirements. And uh, this guy doesn't really hit them? Then again, hmm, I don't know. Pass. Sorry, I, I think you misheard me. I'm talking about the cold-hearted, merciless prosecutor, Barrack Von Zeeks. What was he like when he was at university? Talk about a leading question, Runo. As I said, an unassuming, extremely pleasant gentleman. After all, he is the little darling of the Van Zeeks family with all its great aristocratic origins. I, I didn't realize he had quite such a noble... I, 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 I didn't realize he had quite such noble blood. Little darling. It was a bit of a shock when I came back to Britain and learned what he'd become. The Reaper of the Bailey, no less. Yes, that's right. I did hear, though, that there was a very big event in his life that completely changed him after graduation. Really? What sort of event? Ah! I am sorry, but I don't know anymore. I wasn't in the country at the time. I was in Germany already. Slamming down those bratwursts. Oh, yes, of course. If he's heard all about the Reaper, I really don't have the heart to tell him that Lord Van Zeeks will be the prosecutor in court tomorrow. So, Professor, let me just make absolutely sure I've understood you properly. The huge explosion that occurred yesterday, that was an accident, you're saying? You had no intent to harm the victim, who was in fact the sole investor in your work. Is that correct? As correct as two squared is four. I swear it! See, that's math right there. Yes, it's true the man perished in a machine of my invention. So I know that I'm far from blameless in all of this. But still, I would never use my discoveries, my inventions, to take a person's life. Not in a centillion years. I'm a man of science. It's all I know. You have to believe me, please. Do you believe me? Do you believe in my hypothesis? Science is the pursuit of truth, you know. I've always believed that. All my life. 
I'm afraid I don't know much about science, or your theories. But I do believe you, and I will fight to prove your innocence with all my might. I'm a man of the law. It's all I know. You have to believe me. Please. When I went to live in Germany after I graduated, I learned something very important. Nationality, class, lineage, none of that matters. As long as you try your hardest, you can achieve anything. Or get a giant grant from your father. Thank you for that, Professor. And thank you in advance for defending me tomorrow in court. Alright, Runo. It's time. Time to visit the Great Exhibition. Sorry? Well, that's where the incident happened, isn't it? Yes, I suppose that's true. Time to investigate at last. This guy has your weakness. Poofy hair? No. Nervous de nervous disposition. Good business place. Don't forget to take me when you go. Not that either. Uh, experimentation stage of the Great Exhibition and the scene of the crime. desk is a mess right now. Too much cheese and uh, empty soda can. Well, empty Arnold Palmer can. I'm gonna have another one, actually. Great Exhibition Grounds, foot of the Crystal Tower. Cups, cups everywhere, yeah. Oh, hey, sour cream. How you doing? Meowdy. Good cheese. Music. <clears throat> My phone! Oh no. Why did it have to be that? Come on. Life is cruel sometimes. Alright, I'm almost done eating. No, it's fine. I'm almost done eating. I only have one more uh, one more piece of cheese to go. So I'll clear that. Oopsie bird. Ugh, the Shoguns are a little too big for my liking. And those guards are so tiny! Look at them. Look how small they are. I've been walking around in dense crowds for two hours now, and I've filmed myself swooning three times. Yes, I saw the animation you made. It was really good. There are a lot of people, aren't there? I've been almost trodden on three times. Be careful, won't you, Iris? Don't let go of my hand. We finally made it through the throngs, though. We finally made it through the throngs, though, by the look of it. Here we are, underneath the public experimentation stage where the explosion happened yesterday. Ah! Ooh! Ah! What's that? I can hear voices from up on the stage. Sounds like an argument. Right, I've had it with you. I'm warning you, I'll arrest you this minute. Oh, it's Ginny. Oh yeah? Go on, Inspector, give it a shot. You ain't got no evidence and you know it. Wait, I know those voices. That cheeky little mouth on you, young lady. But a night in the cells will teach you some manners. Just try it, I dare you. If you want that bag of chips rammed down your throat. Yahoo! Yoo-hoo! Gregzy, what are you doing up there? Ah! Ah, it's you, here. You're here, you're here you are. You, here. Your ladyship. How are you, your ladyship? Do hope you're well, your ladyship. Does that make her three times a lady? I'm not well at all. It's far too busy everywhere. 
I wanted to ride in a balloon, but there was a three-hour queue. Unbelievable. I'll go have a word for you at once, your ladyship. You'll be flying high as a kite in no time once I pull some strings for you. Yeah, the adventures of Sasado, Naruhowo, and, and Hoak Showoms. God damn it. Tobias Gregson, an inspector at Scotland Yard. Until recently, he was suspended from duty, but it would appear he's back in action now. Oh, right, he did some stupid shit in the last case, too. Not the last case I played, but the last case of, uh, of the last game. Which is chronologically the last case before this one. Actually, no, the first case of this game. <laughs> Never mind. Alright, forget, forget I said anything. Isn't Ginny that thief? Yeah, Ginny is the thief, but remember, she wasn't... She, she got... She reformed. And she found, like, a purpose to her life, so... He's actually quite no well known, appearing as he does in the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. And for that reason, he can't say a word wrong to the story's author, Iris. But there are limits, surely. Or well, there should be. Watch it, sunshine. So sorry? What gives then? Don't tell me you're on this case. Yes, I'm acting for the defense. So we're here to investigate. Hmm, dear me. That's the situation, is it? Is it really that troubling? Measly five bob. Is that all you got? You're a lawyer, ain't ya? You? you could stand and carry a bit more copy around in your pockets, Mr. Nara Odo. What? Hey, that's my last bit of spending money, that is. You can have it back, but I'll have to charge you for all the bother. Three bob. This is Gina Lestrade, a pickpocket, or diver, born and bred in the East End of London. In the case that led to my own suspension six months ago, this is the young girl I was defending in court. What's your problem, eh, Odo? <laughs> you like her, she's just a mood. She is a mood. Diver? Pickpocket? What's with all the name calling? You want a bag of chips ran down your throat and all, do ya? I, I thought you were proud to be a diver, Gina. You were just arguing with Inspector Gregson about it, weren't you? I assumed you'd been up to your usual tricks here at the showground. That ain't no way to talk to a lady, Odo. Half a year's a long time. People can change. I'm an apprentice now, learning to be a Scotland Yard detective. So you'll have to call me what everyone else does. It's Inspector Lestrade now. In Inspector? That badge is homemade, surely. The inspector part isn't entirely accurate. No one calls her that. For what it's worth, anyway. Investigating is off the cards for all of us. What's that supposed to mean? Right, well, I'll be back up top. You hold the fort down here, alright? Right, sir. Man, she really becoming a cop? That's, that's such a lame face turn. Heel turn, technically. This, this raises a lot of questions. Mm -mm -mm. She's. This armband is proof, in Japan at least, that I'm a defense lawyer. And this badge is proof. I just spit cheese out. Oops. This badge is proof that I'm a detective. What happened in the soap case? Uh, Shamspear killed Olive Green's boyfriend pre previously, and he was trying to kill Natsume uh, by blowing into the pipes, the gas pipes. And Olive Green was the one who tried to kill Shamspear by putting the poison on his pipe. So Shamspear got arrested. And, well, I mean, they both got arrested, but Sham Spear for murder, whereas uh, Olive just got locked up, assuming, for the for the attempted murder. But, afterwards, we found out it's because Sham Spear wanted to get the uh, thief, that, that, that inmate that they mentioned, his treasure. Uh, and we found it, thanks to Herlock. And as soon as Herlock saw the treasure, his face went, like, really white. And they said, he, he told... Uh, 
He told Iris he, she couldn't write about the case at all. That this case had to be kept off the books. And that's kind of where we are now. So you're all gonna have to start calling me Inspector Lestrade. In that case, you'll have to start calling me... Well, anything but Odo. I can call you Defendant Nara Odo if you like, but it don't really trip off the tongue. No, it doesn't have a great ring to it, does it? Gina, would you take a look at... Oh, where did it go? <laughs> Looking for this, Odo? Why did she do that? wonder if you got anything else to show me, eh? What do you reckon? Give that back first, please. Yeah, the case was a big soap opera because it was... The guy was a, a present... Yeah, 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 I get it. The Crystal Tower. It's certainly an apt name. It was built to be the focal point of the exhibition, and it definitely is being so tall and with all that glass. I can't imagine a building like this ever being erected in Japan. There are lots of exhibits inside the tower as well, apparently. Of course, an observation deck, but there's also an art gallery, a zoo, and a museum. But I heard you have to queue for three hours just to get through the doors. Well, at the moment, the shattered glass from the failed experiment may well be the biggest draw. And thanks to that accident, this whole tower's shut. We're in case three right now. In fact, I should actually update the uh, stream title to say that. Chapter 3-1. I'm going to get rid of the clever uh, title here. Suddenly it's not the crystal tower anymore, but the crystal glass tower. Crystal glass shower. <laughs> Apparently everyone's taken to the skies now to look down on the disaster area from above instead. But there's a three-hour queue to go up in a balloon now. Londoners must be very patient people. Nothing particular of note. Ah, it looks as though somebody dropped something behind the tree just here. Dropped or hid? What is this? Some part of the machine that exploded? That looks like a crossbow, almost. Maybe. Could have fallen from the platform above in the blast, perhaps. What's going on here? Oh, nothing. I think I'll hang on to this, just in case. Very curious device found behind a tree under the experimentation stage of the exhibition grounds. Almost have been hidden there deliberately. Deliberate. For some reason, the ground is damaged in this spot. Look. It's almost as if there was a fire here or something. Yes, if you look closely, there's some scattered ash and burnt embers, too. Well, I suppose there was a big explosion just above here. People probably wouldn't bat an island at a small fire like this would have been. What? People probably wouldn't have, wouldn't bat an island at a small fire like this would have been... Wait, what? Well, I suppose... People probably wouldn't bat an eyelid at a small fire like this would have been. This is, that doesn't sound right. I'm not sure we English are quite that laid back, Bruno. Oh, look, what's this? A ripped piece of cloth? Mm, it's not like any fabric I've ever seen before. It's very thick and stiff. It looks extremely durable. It's canvas, I think. And some sort of rubber backing. And the edges appear to be a bit charred as well. Maybe that means that it's something to do with the explosion. Let's make a note of it while Ginny's mid-yawn. Torn piece of canvas-like material backed with rubber that was found on the experimentation stage at the exhibition grounds. There are scorch marks at the edges. platform must have been set up for the experiment, I suppose. It's very high up. About 30 feet above the ground, apparently. That's what a policeman I just spoke to says. I don't really understand feet very well. We don't use them in Japan. 
And how do you walk? Oh, sorry, it's about nine meters. But soon you'll have been in London a year, Bruno. It's time you got used to our measurements. Yes, well... This thing is so tall, the spectators at the front would just have seen a wall and nothing else. They probably thought they secured the best spot to watch from, only to be disappointed. There's a saying in Japan, the darkest spot is right under the lighthouse. I feel like it probably applies here. These stairs obviously lead to the stage above. We should go up there and investigate the exact spot where the experiment was being conducted. Great Exhibition Grounds experimental Experimentation Stage. So that's it then. The machine that blew up. Oh, it must have been a magnificent explosion, and I've seen my fair share. You've seen things like this before, you mean? Of course, Hurley's always doing experiments that end in a bang. In fact, his own words, explosions are the very essence of chemistry. Ah, that might explain the smell of burning that frequently comes wafting up the stairs. One time he made something that exploded with such force it took the roof off the building. Wish you'd been there to see it, Runo. It's hard to get too excited about that, given that I now live in the attic. Well, anyway, that's enough about that. It's time to investigate. I didn't talk to Gina yet. Oh, look, Inspector Gregson is over there. He seems to be deep in thought about something. Lost eyeing up the machine carefully. Really? He just looks confused to me. Oh, I can't go back. Oh, wait, yeah, I can. That's weird. I actually can't go, like, I can't re-access it. There are all sorts of strange buildings here in the Great Exhibition Grounds, aren't there? I seem to remember something similar being exhibited in Japan one time. Oh, in your country, Runo? I do wish I could go and see it. I'd present a particularly steely samurai with a present of once Hurley... of Hurley's stories I'd written especially. Wait, I present a particularly steely samurai with a present of one of Hurley's stories I've written especially. And see if I couldn't get Hurley into a jam against some Baritsu... Bartitsu... Bartitsu Master Jinza. Oh, ninjas. Oh my god. Um, you might not find as many of those sorts of people around you as you think. You drew fan art for a dear friend. Well, that's nice. Those are a deer with two E's. So I could probably take a guess at what that means. Oh, well, that's dull. Oh, but I do know a prosecutor with a Chan Ma Chanmage topknot I could introduce you to. A Chanmage? Really? Do you think I could have my picture taken with him? Do you? Assuming he's recovered from the trim Kazuma gave him a year ago, yes. What is that gigantic thing over there? It looks like an enormous water wheel. Oh, that's a Ferris wheel. There'll be people riding inside those little cabins, you see. Why? Well, they rotate nice and slowly, so it's a wonderful way to see the surrounding scenery. Wait, it's turning? It looks completely still. Yes, that's because it's turning so slowly. One complete revolution takes about half an hour. If you were mad enough to go in one, it would be more fun to whiz around fast, don't you think? I feel as though you might have just invented a new sort of ride there, Runo. Nothing in William and Turner box here. It ripped itself apart magnificently, didn't it? Magnificently and mercilessly. So someone stands in the middle of the machine to be disassembled and then beamed through the air. Yes, beamed. Not blasted. That's the point. Yes, that part's crucial, really. Is something like that even possible, though, Iris? Oh, Runo, I'm just a child. How should I know? A child when it suits you, you mean. 
From what I can tell, I think if you were to pull this lever here... Stop! Don't touch that! <laughs> that was a particularly instantaneous kinesis the way you flew over there just now, Gregzy. Please, your ladyship, I didn't mean to startle you, but I can't let you touch anything up here. So sorry, you could have some of my latest special blend to make up for it. It's open. Ah, oh, wonderful. This stuff is really wonderful. Just like old times, this is. We're representing Professor Hairbrain in court tomorrow, Inspector. So we should be allowed to examine the scene. Ha! Unless it's sunshine. You and I are not allowed to touch anything up here. It's that blasted SD for... Uh, it's that blasted special dispensation for scientific equipment act to blame. It's driving me potty. Oh yes, that special dispensation. The professor mentioned that too. More red tape's all we need. I don't know what the government thinks it's playing at sometimes. But we're allowed to just look, aren't we? Eh. Surely that's all right, isn't it, Gregzy? Mention the Grim Reaper of the Bailey. Sitting in a Ferris wheel or a roller coaster. He seemed kind of chill when we were at his office earlier. Of course, your ladyship. Anything you say, your ladyship. But please don't get your dainty hands, dainty hands dirty, will ya? Don't worry. We wouldn't dream of touching anything, would we, Runo? She really knows how to get what she wants. Considering how badly damaged everything is, Professor Hairbrain was lucky to escape unscathed, I say. We should have a good look around this machine while we can, I think. Touch anything and I'll make sure I kill you before you get strung up myself, uh, you hear? I, I won't touch a thing, I promise. So please, spare a thought for your digestion. Anyway, do you really think this machine can actually disassemble people like the Professor claims? He asks, looking totally incredulous. Give it a rest, Sunshine. If we were allowed to examine all this bleeding scrap metal, maybe we could answer that question. But oh, we can't, can we? Because of the annoying rules, you mean? Exactly, the annoying obstructive flame and rules. Oh, look at the base of the machine there. Oh yes, there's a tool of some kind poking through the wire mesh. It's a screwdriver, I think. Oh, isn't this a lovely one? The handle's in the shape of a capital letter A. It is? Oh yes, you're right. What's the matter with you? Don't touch anything, I said. Touch anything and I'll make sure I kill you before I get strung up myself, I said. Yes, yes, I understand. Sorry. I only touched a teeny weeny bit. But Greg Z, I'm very curious about the screwdriver. Really very, very curious. Of course, your ladyship, you're so clever, your ladyship. Fancy spotting something like this. But I'm afraid I can't let you have it. But Runo found it first. I assure you, I'll investigate it thoroughly. He's gone off with it. <laughs> that was very mean. I'm afraid Inspector Gregson is going to make a very clumsy and embarrassing mistake in next month's installment now. Poor Gregzy. Looks like all of this is just one piece. So those are people carrying balloons dangling, dangling silently in the skies above London. I always thought the day would come when humans would discover how to fly. But I never imagined it would involve them being suspended from colorful floating tamari, tamari handballs. I'm sure it must feel amazing being up there among the clouds. Let's take a ride together, Runo, please. I'm being perfectly honest, I would like to try it. Without a cast iron guarantee that this thing won't plummet to the ground. I'm too scared. Oh well, in that case I should tell you what Hurley said. It's physically impossible for a flying balloon to plummet to the ground, as long as it doesn't explode. Yes, call me crazy, but I think that exploding part might play on my mind a little. I 
amazing horn-shaped device is pointing towards the crystal tower. I suppose once people are disassembled by the machine, they're shot out of that thing to wherever they're going. I don't think this was supposed to shoot anything, Bruno. It was set up to beam people to the crystal tower, where they'd be reconstructed in their original form. Well, I don't like the look of it. If it was as amazing as it looks, the accident would have happened in the first place, of course. I suppose that's true, yes. But nothing ever goes according to plan, does it? using high voltage electricity to somehow disassemble a man's body and then beam him across the crystal tower. It's an extraordinary thing to attempt, especially in public. True, it was by far the most unusual of the experiments planned for the exhibition, mind. To be honest, I'm a bit surprised it was allowed. Carrying out something so dangerous with so many spectators present, I mean. The government's doing everything it can to promote new science and technology at the moment. They're more worried about being ahead of the game than the odd spot of the public safety infringements. If they can be the first to develop some new technology, it makes Britain more powerful in the future, you see. Yes, I suppose that's true, in a way. So the powers that be are placing a heavy emphasis on the scientists' right at rights at the moment. At, uh, at the moment. What sort of rights? They're making it so that any theories the brains have remain their legal property, as it were. Right through developing it into a practical idea and even going into production. Which is infuriating reason us coppers aren't allowed to touch the crime scene. Because the new highfalutin special dispensation for scientific equipment act forbids it. I see now. The only people with permission to investigate here are from some new... The only people permission with permi... Oh my god. I've been streaming for three and a half hours. You have to forgive me. The only people with permission to investigate here are from some brand new department at the Yard. The Forensic Investigation Team, it's called. We've been relegated to keep in guard. The Forensic Investigation Team? Any old fool can see this heap of scrap metal was a sham to begin with. But just because it says scientific equipment on the paperwork, we can't do a flaming thing with it. Poor Gregsy. He's very head up, isn't he? Remind me again, what's this new legal act that means we're not allowed to touch the scene here? Are you having me- what are you- are you having me at it, Sunshine? It's a special dispensation- dis, it's a special dis- it's a, 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 a cockapotamus. It's a special dispensation for Scientific Equipment Act. Hmm, yes. I think Hurley mentioned that recently, with a real twinkle in his eyes, I remember. I'm sure he did, your ladyship, I'm sure he did. Passed especially for this great exhibition it was. All scientists have to do is present their ideas or inventions to some suits in the civil service. And if it gets rubber stamped, it's a guarantee of rights to maintain the invention's confidentiality. What does that mean, really? Think about it. Think of all the world-changing new inventions on display every day at this exhibition. Although a good half of them are a load of cobblers, if you ask me. Put forward by shammers like yourself. Thanks for that. Oh, I love how absurd some of the inventions here are. It's so fun. It might be fun to you, but a member of the Force has to be present at every single demonstration. Can you imagine, eh? Hang science, that's what I say. Oh, I don't think so. That sounds like my dream job. You'd soon think otherwise after spending a day guarding all these shammers, bogus contraptions. But if they're all bogus, how can anyone hope to demonstrate them? There'd be no point. Yeah, well... There is a point, sadly. Sorry? Thanks to another of our government's bright ideas. If any theory or invention is deemed to show potential, the government hands out a research grant. The scientist gets funding? Exactly. And that's why we're all what they're all after. All those shammers coming far and wide to clog up Hyde Park. And who wants to keep them all safe, eh? Who wants to smile politely and welcome them? That's coppers, that's who. As you can see why I say it now, can't you? Hang science! Hang it! Wow, spoken like a true no uh, modern-day cop. Oh, maybe I could see your point. Apparently, Professor Hairbrain lives and works in Germany now, conducting his research. That's right, came back to Britain especially for the Great Exhibition, as I understand it. Probably after one of the government's research grants. 
Actually, we learned something else about the professor earlier today, too. About his time in further education. Turns out he was at university with someone we both know. Lord Van Zeeks. Eh, what's that? That's news to me. But, but if Van Zeeks mans the prosecution, and as the accused, the professor's fate is... Sealed? Because the Reaper will get him one way or the other? Blimey. That man's beyond me. I don't know what goes on in that head of his. Talking to Van Zeeks, this morning's paper ran the story of him being attacked. Read that. Oh yes, but Mr. Reaper's completely fine. Nothing to worry about. Yes, right. Glad to hear it. Still the Reaper, huh? How long's that business gonna keep up, I wonder? The victim of this case, the investor Mr. Asman. He was another of the Reaper's victims, or so I heard. Lord Barak Van Zeeks is a top-class prosecutor. But even he can't always push the right verdict through. Sometimes justice can't win. Yes, I've heard about jurors being bribed and evidence being falsified. And that's how the notion of the Reaper of the Bailey came about, isn't it? Obviously, Scotland Yard suspected Van Zeeks initially. But all assumed he was taking matters into his own hands if he failed to seal the deal in court. Although the man himself denies that charge. Well, he, we've done a very thorough investigation. And the conclusion we've reached is that Lord Van Zeeks is in no way related to the deaths of those people outside the courtroom. There's no question in my mind. I'd stake my reputation on it, I would. But if that's true, then how do you explain it? All those defendants couldn't have just coincidentally died if nobody killed them. I know that, but I can't explain it. It's a mystery after all, isn't it? That's the whole point of the Reaper. Professor Harebrain mentioned something else. He said that at a university, Lord Van Zeeks was a totally different person. Easygoing and kind. What? He said that it was after they both graduated that something happened to change the man. Do you have any idea what it was? No clue. Really? Look, I've got my hands full watching over this frustrating crime scene. Why don't you go and make a nuisance of yourself elsewhere, eh? Layers of thick canvas with a thick rubber lining of sorts. Never seen anything like it before. But applying Mr. Sholmes' methods, you might deduce it was part of a raincoat worn by someone who really, really didn't want to get wet. And the charring must have occurred when the person was struck by lightning. Or maybe not. Yeah, this looks like a, this looks like a crossbow of some sort. some sort of lever here. Yep, I, I knew it. That's exactly what this is. What the? What is this? It, it looks like a cross between a bow and a gun. I think it's probably used for the same thing, too. Crossbow. Been found hidden behind the tree. It turns out that it's, folding, it's a folding crossbow. Looks like you wind this around in order to draw the bowstring back and create tension. You must be able to fire arrows with a huge amount of force using this device then. In fact, I would imagine it's far more accurate and powerful than a Japanese longbow. Oh, I really had no idea what I, was picking, what I was picking up. I really had no idea what I was picking up when I was... Oh, man. I really had no idea what I was picking up when I spotted this at the exhibition grounds. Wait till I see the sword gun. You want to know something disgusting? I bought the uh, I bought the season pass in Chocobo GP. I bought I bought the level sixty season pass. Um, I, I what happened was I bought the two one time deals where they give you like a reduced price on those stupid ass crystals. And I, I bought the, the pass that gets me enough coins to get uh, Squall. So I have Squall and Cloud in that game now. 
If they continue the pass onto the next season, though, I'm not going to invest in it, obviously. That's a lot of money to pay for just two characters. And you don't even get their alternate, uh... You don't even get their alternate cars. You just get their basic one. Their alternate ones are even more... Even harder to get. This groove here must be where the arrows are loaded, I suppose. So I was right. It's sort of a bow with an automatic firing mechanism. This would be perfect for someone like me who catches his ear with the bowstring two times out of three. In fact, if I had one of these, maybe I could have beaten Kazuma in Kyoto archery training. Kyudo. Back hurts. This is the symbol of a defense lawyer where I come from, Inspector. Well, it doesn't pass muster here in London. Might as well chuck it in that deep fat fryer. No one's ever said that to me before. Mr. Sholmes suggested I feed it to a dog, though. If you fry it first, you could feed it to me. Does he think it's made of pot potato? Pot pot potato. Inspector, have you read this paper? Yeah, two unwelcome blasts back to back. This one, the exhibition, and the Reaper getting attacked. I know, terrible news to wake up to, wasn't it? I tried to pretend I hadn't read it and turned it over for another 40 winks. Thanks to that, I was late getting up and I got a roasting from the super. Some mornings are like that, aren't they? As a detective, what do you make of this? Personally speaking, nine times out of ten, I find clues turn out to be red herrings. So there's every chance that's totally irrelevant. It's actually a fairly persuasive argument. His name's gone. Um, Lord Van Zeeks. I think he's ignoring you, Bruno. The prosecution and defense should avoid defense should avoid speaking outside of the courtroom as a rule. So if anyone is being rude here, it's most certainly the man in black there standing before us. Oh, I see. Well then, thank you for setting the record straight. <laughs> you see that? You spoke to me, Runo. So, Lord Van Zeeks, have you managed to visit the Great Exhibition yet? He's definitely ignoring you. Right. No niceties allowed either. Then no niceties either. Then. Look at him standing there menacingly. He's standing like Dio. He's got his feet in like the Dio pose. Truly a vampire. I've been meaning to ask you for a while now, but what are those funny round blobs floating in the sky? Oh, I should have done this first. Oh, they're the flying balloons I've been talking about. I want to go up in one so much. I've, I've read about situations like this in a magazine about strange phenomena. C creatures from outer space coming in round flying objects to, to attack Earth. What? I suppose inhabitants of uh, other planets are bound to be interested in great exhibition. This is it, Iris. It's happening. It's not. Don't worry. I'll explain it all to you later over a nice cup of tea, Runo. Where the co that's where Cove ended up after his instant kinesis or whatever they call it. Dead, of course. And yet they're calling it the experiment. And yet they're calling the experiment a success. What's the wooden scaffolding there for? Coppers, our lads set up that after the incident happened to get the body down. I think. Don't know really. Didn't you help to erect the scaffold then? 
Nah, lookout duty's more my thing. Wandering around the exhibition and keeping a lookout for the fun stuff. Mind Gregson doesn't hear you saying that, or he'll give you the boot. It's incredible, though, isn't it? I mean, could the victim really have bridged that gap by some sort of invisible kinesis? How fantastical. Eight months ago now that I first encountered Gina in connection with the case I was working on. Oh yeah, technically he met her he met her the first day he was in London. At the time she was living in the East End with a group of other orphans. Mostly reformed pickpocket is now a self imported de detective inspector. She's really making waves in her new apprenticeship. Detective in Inspector in charge of Scotland Yard's investigation. He's stern, single-minded in his approach. Great lover of fish and chips. She helped all of them survive by pickpocketing, but then she got embroiled in a murder. Two murders, technically. I had a lot of time to think in prison. I realized I couldn't go on like I was. The, div the diving weren't working out. Oh, I'm so pleased to hear it, Ginny. Well done. So you went from being a pickpocket to a detective? You got it. Good in it. Inspector Lestrade. Sounds like something out of a book, eh? Talk about a sea change. And then there's Iris's old man to think about. Iris's father, you mean? Yeah, I promised her, didn't I? I said I'd get all the police forces around the world to pull out all the stops looking for him. Just a small promise, then. Nothing serious. Oh, Ginny, you're so sweet. So anyway, that's how come I had to go to a test for. So anyway, that's how come I had to go with a test for Scotland Yard. Only trouble is, I don't read so well, do I? Just a small problem, nothing serious. And that's when Hurley approached Gregzy and asked for help. So the inspector said he'd take full responsibility for Ginny and made her sort of an apprentice. That was very magnanimous of Inspector Gregson and brave. Well, you know Hurley, he enjoys finding ways to make people do what he wants. Great detective likes digging for dirt, in other words. So, the long and short of it is, if you got questions about the case, you can ask Inspector Lestrade. Right then, Inspector. Actually, there's still a big mystery surrounding Gina, isn't there? Oh, what, Runo? What? Well, six months ago, Gina was the defendant in a trial prosecuted by the Reaper. A trial in which she was found not guilty, and yet here she is still... Come on, you're not still on about that, are you? Legend of the Reaper, or whatever it's called. Cool, you don't half worry, Odo. If I didn't half worry, there probably wouldn't be a whole lot of you left. It's like I told you before, innit? The Reaper's kind of like him upstairs, so he knows what I'm like on the inside. That I'm really done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong might be stretching a point. What about Mr. Natsume in Japan? He's perfectly fine, isn't he? Well, that's true. Perhaps the Reaper's more discerning than I thought. Exactly. So I ain't worried. I'm totally fine. Oh, I was out of this world it was. The brainy bloke pulled a bunch of levers on his machine and suddenly it started billowing smoke. Then it just went pop. I ain't seen a better experiment here yet. Sorry? You mean you saw it, Ginny? With your own eyes? Yeah, of course. The boss is in charge here, ain't he? Of keeping everything running smooth, I mean. The boss being Inspector Gregson, I suppose. It's going to take some getting used to. So all I have to say is that I'm on duty and I can do whatever I want to. Get this, I was up in one of them flying balloons when it happened, watching it from above. No, you're so lucky, Ginny. Maybe I should join Scotland Yard, too. Yeah, do it. You know how to put the boss in his place already, right, Iris? You have no trouble at all. And it's settled. When do I start? No, 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 no. You can't join Scotland Yard, Iris. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I don't understand. What I don't understand is this. 
If this machine exploded so spectacularly, how come Professor Bunnybrain can still be claiming that his experiment was a success? Oh, right. Well, it was a success, in a way. It was? How can it have been? Because the body was on the scaffold. So it did teleport. I guess, maybe? Kinda? Not really. Surely after the whole machine blew up, no one could call the experiment a success. It's like I said, it did sort of work. I mean, yeah, there was a load of smoke in that whopping Great Bang. But where'd you think they found the victim's body, eh? In the crystal tower over there. What? In the tower? In the tower. You can see for yourself, can't you? Up there above the scaffold. Oh, where all the glass is broken, you mean? Yeah, the cage what got the victim got in st st well, we're, 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 we're. Yeah, the cage what the victim got in to start with. Really did get beamed through the air or whatever and landed all the way over there. So you see, it did kind of work, didn't it? What? I, I I don't believe it. I mean, I don't get the ins and outs of it, but if anything's possible, right? With science. Oh, I tell you what, you can have this. It's a plan of the experiment they drew up at the yard. Are are you sure? Yeah, go on. I had three bob off you before, so fair's fair. Yes, I didn't actually give that to you, did I? Diagram showing the relative positions of the Crystal Tower and Professor Hairbrain's machine that exploded. So the scaffold, I'm assuming, is right here, and the, and the machine... Or wait. A little confused. Oh, whatever. It's a very simplistic drawing. Something Inspector Gregson said before seemed a little strange. But what it's worth, anyway. Has to get off the cards for all of us. Yeah, snotty old Gregsy ran off after that without explaining himself. Oh, right, that. The boss said no one's allowed to investigate that weird machine that what blew up yesterday. Well, that's not fair. We're representing the defendant. In that case, could you at least tell us what you've learned from your investigations? Nah, you're not getting it. We ain't allowed to investigate, neither. Why? What did the boss call him again? The Forensic Investigation Team, I think? Anyway, apart from them lot, no one's allowed to lay a finger on the scene. Bit funny, innit? So even Scotland Yard's own detectives can't investigate. Yes, I've never heard something like that before. Thought I could have a gander on the quiet, though, but the boss caught me at it. You probably heard him giving me an earful about it before from down here, didn't you? It's not bleeding fair. I think you were giving up him... You're giving him as much of an earful back as I remember it. Yeah, well, sometimes I think it's all them chips what make him so stubborn. You say something to Emoto. Go on. See if you can get through to him. He's up on the platform above us, is he? Where the machine that exploded is. We could try, can't we, Runo? Gregsy will listen to us. I'll make him listen to us. We already did that, though. Runo, Runo, listen. What? What is it? I've been thinking. Hurley might know something, mightn't he? About what? About Mr. Reaper! About what happened to Lord Van Zeek, you mean? Because it sounds like something very significant occurred after he graduated from university. Something that completely changed his life. Maybe, but I have no idea where to find Mr. Sholmes at the moment. He's in the middle of some big case, isn't he? Yeah, this is what you need. What's this? Some kind of entrance ticket? Madam to spells. To spells. Is this supposed to mean something for me? You don't know it? It's the most popular attraction in London at the moment. It's very close to Baker Street, actually. We could go now if you like. No, no, we don't have time for visiting attractions today, Iris. We have a big trial tomorrow. But that's where Hurley is. What? At this popular London attraction? Yes. How is it that you know where he is? Hurley told me, but he told me to keep it a secret from you, Runo. Madam to spells. I don't see how that could be related to the case we're investigating here, but then... Stranger things have happened, and when they happen, Mr. Sholmes is usually at the heart of them.
Museum of Interesting Waxworks exhibits not too far from Baker Street has become a very popular London attraction in recent years. This is where Hurley is. I'd love to know what he's up to, wouldn't you? Madam to spells Museum of Waxworks. Anime as fuck. W what is this place? Look at all these t terrifying scenes. But why are all the p people so still? Guillotines, ruthless murderers. I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. They're all wax models. They're amazingly realistic, aren't they? I'm guessing that Sholmes is one of the wax models here. What do you think, Runo? Shocked? W wax models? Ah! I read about the dead bodies of wax once in a m magazine about strange phenomena. Depending on how c corpses are kept after death, parts of them can turn to wax, apparently. It's c called a... Adi... Adip... Adipocker. Adipocker? Adiposer? Adipocker, I don't know. Adipocker. Stop talking about creepy things like that, Runo. You're scaring me. Was that even a thing back then? Uh, I would assume so. Anyway, Adipocker doesn't perform readily, you know? It's only in very specific... Ah! What now? I've... I've just remembered something else I read. In another m magazine about strange phenomena, there was an old lady, maybe a witch, who used to pour molten wax over c corpses and put them on display. None of the exhibits here are real. They're all entirely man-made replicas. They can't be. Do you really expect me to believe that? Just look at them! Oh. There's no way anybody can make models of people that are this realistic. Oh, there's Sholmes right there. He wasn't there before. Thought he was going to be disguised as someone. And they're all such gruesome scenes. Wait. What is it? Oh, no. I must be seeing things. Is this an arm? It looks like an arm, doesn't it? Maybe one of the waxwork models has fallen over. You... You don't think it could be the work of one of the mass murderers in here, do you? Runo! Stop scaring me. Is it a wax arm or a real one? Come on, you're always pointing that finger of yours in court. Poke that arm now and see how it feels. Objection. Whew. All right, I need a breather here for a second. Phone's been taking a long time to charge lately, and I don't know why. <sighs> okay. That big heavy curtain is in a very prominent position, isn't it? I have a nasty feeling there's going to be something truly terrifying behind it. Oh, yes, that's the famous Dispel Special Exhibit. It depicts one of England's most notorious killers. You want to pay the extra fee and have a look? Pay more money to be even more terrified? Uh, let me think about that for a moment. It was only a suggestion. These models are so well made, I can't tell what's a waxwork and what's a real human. Or maybe all of the exhibits are real people. And when it's closing time and all the visitors have gone home, they suddenly start moving about. Ugh, just thinking about it makes me wish it was closing time already, and I was on my way home.
Is is this some infamous m m murderer? Yes, called Jane the Ripper. All her victims were young women. I knew it. You could t tell by the way she's holding the knife. Sure sign of a m m murderer. Well, yes. Ah. What's the matter, Luno? I've worked it out. I know what she's doing. She's trying to fill that bathtub with blood so she can have a soak in her victim's gore. Um, not according to the information about the exhibition. Not according to the ex information about the exhibit on the little board here. It doesn't mention anything about the bathtub. Really? Sorry. I don't think it's significant. I still think that there has to be some reason for it. Oh, that's a funny place for a little ladder. What is it? Is something wrong? No, it's just that in Japanese, we have a totally different word for a ladder that folds in half like that. We do in English too, you know. It's a step ladder, or just steps. So be careful of making assumptions about other cultures, Runo. That's how wars are started. I didn't realize step ladders were an international point of contention. But the writer makes an astute point. So that's, um... If you don't know Ace Attorney, it's a running gag in every game that the main character and the assistant will always have some sort of argument over whether or not a ladder is a step ladder or not. And it happens every single game for every character. Uh, and apparently there's there's two conversations about ladders in this game that you could get. And you get an achievement for getting both. Uh, is this is this an example of Western Tsujigiri? I don't know what that is. You know, when an unscrupulous samurai randomly attacks a passerby to test his sword? I still don't know, no. But in actuality, a waxwork samurai would probably be hugely popular. Could you model it, do you think, Runo? Doing that Tsujigiri thing you mentioned? Well, I do have a sword, but I have no intention of testing how sharp it is on a human subject. For now, at least. It's... it's... The great detective, Mr. Herlock Sholmes! Mr. Sholmes has his own wax statue in here? Really? Yeah, ladder is mostly the, the, the straight one. And step ladders have steps and are not straight. I think it's almost always a step ladder that shows up in other games. And the other... and the main character will always incorrectly call it a ladder. Just like the spade, uh, shovel argument in... In Narhoto's office. Well, he is world famous, after all. It's an uncanny resemblance, isn't it? it? Makes my skin crawl to look at. I know! But look, Bruno, you can kick this Hurley, and he doesn't move a muscle. Can't go around kicking the exhibits, Iris. Can't wait. It, it just moved, I'm sure. And not just a little bit, either. Hmm? Really? Did it? It's looking the other way. And look closely. There are beads of sweat on the face of this waxwork model. Sh shall we move on, Iris? Over there, look, there's a great murder scene to enjoy. Much more appealing. Hold it! My dear fellows, I take exception to your recoiling in such a manner as if you've seen something truly abhorrent. M Mr. Sholmes, I knew it. Iris, what possessed you? Ooh, excuse me. What was that face for? Sorry, I'm getting tired. I'm gonna have to stop pretty soon. Uh, 
I strictly forbade you from divulging my temporary waxwork secret to Mr. Naruto. Found his reaction to that kick funny. Oh, okay. Temporary waxwork? What do you mean? And that kick, could you not have exercised a little more restraint? That winded me. But Runo has something he needs to ask you. Ah, oh, question. And I thought you'd probably be getting bored, too. So here we are. Hmm, well, I can't deny that your timing was impeccable. A mere two minutes more being stationary like that, and my great brain, upon which all my success has been built, would have turned to wax. Thank goodness we arrived in time. Indeed, in many ways, the pair of you just saved the world from an unimaginable loss. Oh, Hurley, you do like to talk nonsense, don't you? Excuse me. He could know something, it's true. About Lord Van Zeeks and what happened in the past to change him. Now that you're here, let us take our time. How can I be of assistance? For your luck, I'm suddenly quite taken with the idea of conversing. Oh, well, actually, I'm in quite a hurry. And if my eyes don't deceive me, I believe something is afoot within the walls of this very museum. A most fascinating case, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Moreover, I have a strong suspicion that is related to the matter about which you've come to talk to me now. But how could it be? We shall speak again presently, my dear fellow. But for now, I must return to my work. What? Back to being a temporary waxwork exhibit? Mr. Sholmes, about this. As you will see, I'm rather busy at the moment. If it's advice you seek, come to my office tomorrow and I shall be happy to help you. Shall we say, the ruppence per, per item as a consultation fee? That's two hours of gas, that is. Okay. He, he ain't giving me nothing here. What is this place? Madame Tispels came to London from France three years ago, I understand. Since she opened this little waxwork museum last year, it's enjoyed great popularity in London. There are museums like this in Japan, too. But these displays are something else. I mean, they aren't made from actual real people, are they? The extreme realism of these waxwork models is a particular secret of the Tispels family, they say. They earned renown during the French Revolution for waxworks of victims of the guillotine. Ugh, that sounds grim. The gruesome scenes were portrayed with such realism in the expressions of the faces of the condemned. Apparently, the sculptors who would make the models directly from the corpses, right there at the site of the executions, at the... That really turns my stomach. That's just one of several legends about the Tuspels family. Whether there's any truth to it, I couldn't say. But anyway, this museum houses models of famous people from all over the globe. Nevertheless, the most popular area of the museum by quite some margin is this House of Horrors. House of... Oh, horrors? Of course, visitor numbers are dwindling now as a result of the Great Exhibition. But people usually flock here to see the exhibits of some of London's most vile criminals at their gruesome work. Naturally, most of the miscreants portrayed here were sent to the gallows. So they're even stiffer now than the models of them. <laughs> Have you heard of a poor taste? My dear fellow, the public live for poor taste. They yearn to be shocked. So the hideous exhibits in here are... They're all portrayals of real events that actually took place. Is it just me, or did the temperature in here just seem to drop? Anyway, I advise you not to think too deeply about what you see here. No, oh, he's back to being a waxwork, is he? What do you mean by temporary waxwork, Mr. Sholmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half an hour, I home in on a different killer in one of the displays and adopt a new pose to ensnare them. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hand to shake. For a shilling, I'll be happy. I'll happily allow them to take a photograph with us. Us? 
Is he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But why, Mr. Sharms? My dear fellow, isn't it obvious? For the money! He really roared at me there. Very fitting for the House of Horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent. And I have the ravenous iris to consider. Ravenous, excuse me. Ra being ravenous means you're like a raven. No, oh, Hurley, I'm so hungry. If push comes to shove, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Mr. Narahodo. What's he threatened to rope me into now? So, with that in mind, how about a photograph? As a special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in the air. The choice is yours. Maybe some other time. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Narahodo, ignore me at your peril. Back to being a waxwork again. Is it just me, or did this final remark there sound a lot like a curse? Well, what is it you'd like to ask me, then? Um, actually, it's... It's about Lord Van Zeeks. Ah, our friend Mr. Reaper. How did you find him? Well, I trust. And so I filled Mr. Sholmes in about everything I'd learnt. About Lord Van Zeeks, about Professor Harebrain, and about the strange coincidence that they had been at the university together. So I'm wondering what it was that happened to make Lord Van Zeke such a different person. Let's see something here. 34, 33, 33. I wonder if Herlock went to university with them as well. I was sure that you know, Hurley. You said there was something going on here at this exhibit hall before that something was afoot, and that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes? He suddenly clammed up. Well, it seems we've reached the unavoidable. Greetings. Oh, uh, hello. Where did she appear from? And what's she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my museum. Sorry, have we... Mr. Sholmes, did you know this? Not again. My apologies. I am Esmeralda, two spells. This is my museum of waxwork. What? You? You're THE Madame to spells? Bien sûr. Though only 26 years young, I might add. Is that significant somehow? I'm a madam in name only. It adds a certain je ne sais quoi. Right. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks. Or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Sholmes, then. I was led to believe he was a great detective, but he seems unable to settle. Next time you move from your designated exhibit, Will be t you. There will be. To there will be toil and trouble. Eh. That's great. She sounds deadly serious. That's a problem. How am I supposed to ask Mr. Sholmes about Lord Van Zeeks now? Let's not forget what Hurley said before about something being afoot, right here in the museum. I mean, yes, I know, but I'm so curious. I want to know what's happening here. We got enough on our plate already. Oh, my back. Freaking back hurts. Oh, excuse me. One's always got to slip out on stream. Damn. Can I show you this? Oh, how fascinating. Is this made of wax? I keep forgetting to give it the French accent. No, sorry, it's a piece of evidence. Why would you want to show me this? She can only wax lyrical about wax, is that it?
Madam, there's something I'd like to show you. Yes, what, what is that? I had marked on it myself immediately, and I've been very curious since. Wow, we're, I, I just lost everything. I lost my entire accent there. Please do not touch the statues. Uh... Ah, well, it's actually the mark of a defense lawyer in the Empire of Japan. Oh, quel dommage. Not quite as interesting as I'd hoped. What exactly were you expecting from an armband? Did you make all these waxworks, madam, to spells? I did. I am the third generation of waxwork artisans, you know. Gosh! It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Your fortunes were checkered, living through the turbulent times of the French Revolution, as she did. Though that is when she acquired the savior fair that led to the astonishing lifelikeness. All these waxworks really do look as though they're alive. In fact, they look more alive than Hurley. <laughs> what you see exhibited here represents the most atrocious, the most atrocious of London's criminal past. All the waxworks, all the waxworks were created in the presence of the real people on which they were modeled. In the hours immediately following their executions, that is the secret to the extraordinary lifelikeness. That sounds terrifying. All walks of life have similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one's trade par excellence, one must go to extraordinary lengths. My exhibits are a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Ugh. Why couldn't the public have wished for something less horrifying? If, if uh, Toxic Cow was here right now, he'd probably kick my butt. For that awful French accent. Do not fear. Sorry. This room is the only one in the museum with such a macabre theme. I do hope you'll explore. There are models of famous singers, actors, politicians. Something for every taste, I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight here, come to think of it. Sorry, perhaps I should have eased you into things. Um, what's the situation with that. Ah, uh, my temporary waxwork model. He approached me some days ago, you see, with a business proposal. Oh, what sort of proposal? My dear madam, what these sparse exhibits need is the addition of a world-famous great detective. Or words to that effect. Ah, naturally I am well aware of that Mr. Sholmes is widely known in London as a talented detective. It's great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la creme. So I was keen to come around to some arrangements with him, with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree terms. Let me guess. Someone wanted to change the exorbitant. Someone wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services. For mere five hundred pounds, I will dive into your cauldron of wax this very moment. Or words to that effect. Mr. Sholmes might have overdone it slightly with the, the sales pitch. Regrettably, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment, due to unforeseen circumstances. So we came to the current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't really need to do what he's doing, though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. Or words to that effect. It's the pawnbroker, that's what it is. He must have something to redeem. Is the consulting detective not is the is the consulting detective work not going so well? Um I wonder. Can I ask you something? Bien sir. I'm just curious. Is anything going on at the museum in the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Who ever suggested such a thing to you? Oh, well, it was... Your temporary waxwork over there who mentioned it to me a little... Oh, he's disappeared. 
wax model is a work of art, not some tawdry art of trade. Should I? Oh, it's him. Th there you are. Leaving this exhibit again when you should be working. Do you wish to be melted down? My dear Madame Tuspell, save your reprimands. There are more pressing concerns. The wax can wait. It's our ideas about your current problem that we must throw in the melting pot instead. Personally, I would advise you not to involve the police. Why ever not? She's turned as white as a sheet. Because you have at your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shillings. Though please be aware that I prefer... No, I insist upon payment in advance. Very well. Let us see if the great detective is able to live up to his name, shall we? Before I engage my analytical before I engage my analytical processes, I must ask you to clarify something. What prey is behind the curtain? That is to spell special exhibit. Exhibit. It is. That is to spell special exhibit. There's an extra charge to see it. Ah, that special exhibit in the House of Horrors. You must depict a special killer, then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Ah, absolute meant none. There is nothing amiss behind there. Nothing amiss, madam. What about the arm protruding ominously from under the curtain? Ah! I strongly encourage you to allow me to see what lies beyond before the situation worsens. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains. But only soupcon, soupson. But only a soupson. Soupson. Super salad. Number 139. I must confess, I peeked behind the curtain earlier. The two spell special exhibit is a very bleak graveyard scene indeed. And yet, somewhat surprisingly, the waxwork killer one would expect is nowhere to be seen. What does, what does strike one, however, is the portly gentleman lying peacefully on his back on the floor. I've seen that guy before. Well, well, then perhaps Mr. Sholmes, the man on the floor is the ruthless killer himself. I'm afraid not, my dear fellow, he's a perfectly ordinary London gentleman. Not even waxwork, in fact. But... As skillfully made as these waxworks are, they are always distinguishable from real humans. So allow me to present my two conclusions. The first is that a sizable business transaction has been taking place in this special exhibit. Why, why would you say that? And the second is that the aforementioned transaction is linked to a serious crime. Ah! She looks as pale as candle wax. I don't understand. So, Madame Tuspells, as you've agreed to my fee, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Alright. Second great deduction of the game. Waxworth's fate. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum. The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes protruding so helpfully from your bag. My headphones got messed up again. In my estimation, some 200 pounds. That, that is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? Ah, not as much as the involuntary glance you cast it would seem, Madame to spells. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that public notice. Waxwork for sale. Your business has hit hard times, it would seem. In short, you sold the infamous killer, the centerpiece of your special exhibit, for the sum of 200 pounds. Gone! Now, let us explore the next curiosity for which we are presented. 
Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear that the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What that what dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the 200 pounds. It would appear that you twisted this gentleman around your little finger most effectively. What are you suggesting? You rationally agreed to purchase the waxwork for the sum of 200 pounds. Only when he came to hand the money over did it occur to him what an extortionate amount he was paying. But the money was no longer in his hands. And the result? The scene we see before us. He collapsed in shock. Yes, the killer in the special exhibit fetched its killer price. We can only pray that the gentleman's dreams are not plagued with regret. Sold for cash. The question that arises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let us consider that problem for a moment. You, you cannot possibly... What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only to observe his neckerchief. Such as is such as is worn by policemen as a secret sign that fellow members of the force of the crime is being perpetrated. Yes, this young man is an undercover policeman currently investigating this museum. I know him well, in fact. It's Sergeant John Clay. What are you talking about? This man's quite a celebrity. He received triple accolades at last year's policing awards. But... Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. Visage. I've been watching closely and he's moved a muscle. Almost, in fact, as if it were a waxwork. Ah, but... but you... Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed it at once, of course. Observe! The telltale sound that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. Thruppence. A tragically low price, you might say. Though perhaps the going rate for aging waxworks riddled with quack, cracks. Quacks. Oh no. You, you sold it to the portly gentleman for an exorbitant 200 pounds. Sort of plucky behavior that's sure to attract the attention of Scotland Yard. Isn't that so, madam? I... I do not... Yes, the waxwork you sold has already been seized by the police, and remains in their custody as we speak. The old man must be reunited with his grave in the special exhibit, and not a moment too soon. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. I see I've stunned you all into silence. You have, Hurley. You have. And you've obviously upset this young lady in the process. Her cauldron looks awfully hot. Um, if I could just bring up one point, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, the notorious Naruhodo one point. I'm all ears, my dear fellow. According to your deduction, and the special exhibit featuring this old policeman. So, that would mean that he's the particularly ruthless murderer, wouldn't it? The killer policeman, Ottermole. Sorry? It was a mysterious series of murders that rattled the capital only last year. The police rushed to the scene every time only to find the culprit had disappeared into the ether. And it turned out the culprit was a policeman himself, a senior officer by the name of Ottermole. You mean that's the sinister looking old man there? Indeed, it's a particularly grim face, is it not? Unforgettable, in fact. Yes, I remember that odious countenance only too well. But is it? But is 200 pounds a lot of money for a wax model? It would be enough to afford one of the latest steam carriages, if that puts things in perspective. 
So it's quite a lot then. Is there anything else you wish to add? Before I melt you down, that bubbling wax is looking more and more ominous. Ugh, the smell of all that molten wax is starting to worry me. Mr. Sholmes did more or less just accuse her to her face, so... I think I might have to call you on your assistance here, Iris. That's alright. To make some minor corrections to the great detective's great deductions. Of course it's alright. We'll set things straight soon. Well, let's get started then, shall we? Before Madame Two Spells vents her anger. Just what I was waiting to hear, my dear fellow. So, Madame Two Spells, in accordance with our agreement, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. Alright, so it's all the same dialogue as before. I'm hoping this is the end of the part, because I want to stop, you know, and I want, but I want to get to the trial first, at least. Ah, uh, not as much as the involuntary glance you can't- okay, why am I- why do I go back to reading it? Ah, uh, Public sign. She definitely looked in this direction, it's true. But I'm not sure she'd sell any of her waxworks, even for 200 pounds. Oh? She must pour her heart and soul into making them, don't you think? Over and above the wax. If it were me, I wouldn't sell them for anything. For that much money, I would. But it sounds like that makes me a bad person. Well, anyway, I wonder if the 200 pounds could have some other significance. Let's follow that furtive glance again and see if there's anything that could explain it. Oh, on the wall. What's that note doing pinned on the wall there? Oh, yes, let's see. Dear Madam to Spells, we've taken the prisoner from this room. The price for his safe return is 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on 23rd October. What? This, this is it's just the sort of thing that's left behind when someone's kidnapped. Yes, it's a ransom note. Exactly. of the 200 pounds revealed by that ransom note. Quite so, and we must congratulate these criminals on their inventiveness, abducting the waxwork. Ah! 200 pounds is no small ransom fee, yet you clearly intend to pay it. The model in question has special importance, so I put together all the money I have. In summary, then, to the 200 pounds you have in your handbag is ransom money. Now, let us explore the next curiosity in which we are presented. Oh, my back is hurting. Waxwork was kidnapped. Where does that leave us in terms of who this man is? We could just ask him when he comes around. I think the point of this exercise is to understand the beauty of the deduction process, Iris. Yes, you're right. Well, he's trying so hard. We mustn't let him down. Well, there's little doubt that he suffered a shock. That much seems clear. But in that case, what's Madame Tispel's trying to hide? Let's have a closer look around. Hand of Madam. Oh, there's a- oh, she's hiding a wax hand back there. Long hair braid. This is just Madam Tuspel's right hand, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I can clearly see her left hand, after all. Oh, but wait a minute. This is the left hand as well, look. Don't say such creepy things, Iris, please. And it seems very stiff, too. In fact, it 
It's really hard. Y you mean... It's made of wax? Wax or canned. Take that! What dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the waxwork hand. Indeed, with a solid waxwork limb, one could deliver a very substantial blow. How... how could you? The hand protruding from the bottom of your cape. It ought to be a right hand, but closer inspection reveals that, in fact, it's a left hand. Ah! Uh. And somewhat masculine as well. In other words, it does not belong to you, madam. It's the hand of a waxwork model. <laughs> Some of the visitors to my museum can be troublesome. They meddle with the exhibits and cause damage. So you mean that arm? Yes, this gentleman saw fit to try to remove it as a souvenir. No small keepsake. Like taking a whole branch of a cherry tree when you go to view the blossoms. I'm afraid I had to teach the man a lesson. In front of the man and try to take the arm back. Oh, that's Rinosuke. And the result, the scene we see before us. He was knocked unconscious. A point we may mean to revisit later. But for the time being, we have our conclusion. Yes, the killer in the special exhibit has been kidnapped. Solved. Whew, I pooped. Service neckerchief. According to Mr. Sholmes, the yellow neckerchief is a sign to other policemen that some crime is underway. A way of communicating with his colleagues without revealing his identity, yes. It's a secret that's closely guarded by Scotland Yard. That Mr. Sholmes didn't hesitate to give away. Well, uncovering secrets is any true detective's nature, of course. Right. Anyway, judging from Madame Tispel's reaction to Mr. Sholmes' deduction, I think perhaps we might not have identified the man quite correctly. What the? The man has a stub sticking out of his shoulder where his arm should be. Ah, well that settles it then. Right. This isn't a real person at all. His entire arm has been ripped off from his shoulder down. His arm's been... Of course, that ties in with what we just found out. Take that! Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe his shoulder stub. No such boneless human walks this earth, of that I can assure you. In other words, the man standing here, the young Sergeant John Clay, is in fact defying all odds a waxwork model. I seem to remember it was you who concluded he was a real person in the first place, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Sassiness right there. He's become quite a celebrity in London, being the winner of no less than three policing awards last year. I simply had to make a model of the man. Naturally, what other explanation could there be? And it was this detective's arm that was pulled off by a man on the floor in the special exhibit, wasn't it? Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with particularly insightly visage. Visage. Ugh. Killer policeman called Ottermall, was it? Was he well known? He was all over the papers last year, but I can't say I know what he looks like. It's a very low price, though. Thruppence isn't that much money. Only enough for a few measly hours of gas in Mr. Garadib's delightful lodgings, in fact. So this is the special killer taken from the special exhibit, is it? 
waxwork that somebody stole from the museum and tried to ransom for 200 pounds? Is this crusty old killer policeman Ottermole? Really? Perhaps we should have a good look around again and see if another idea crops up. Uh... Look at this! The woman's tapping his foot like crazy! He seems to be fast asleep, though. He's... he's not tapping his foot consciously, then? S he's not tapping his foot consciously, then. So you mean... must be a Twitch! Hey, that's what we're on! Never mind that, the point is waxworks don't tap their feet! Or Twitch. Look at his arm, too. We've seen a scarf like that somewhere else around here, haven't we? I don't believe it! It's the secret sign that lets other detectives know some criminal activity is underway. Yes, it's a slightly strange choice of outfit he was trying to go unnoticed. Uh, he must be a detective disguised as a policeman. Or a detective disguised as a waxwork model of a policeman. He doesn't look like he's clever enough to think of something like that, though. Perhaps you should try to be a little more polite about him, Iris. Take that! Telltale sound that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious twitch. Even the most realistic waxworks do not exhibit a twitch. In other words, this splendid old man is in fact a genuine member of Scotland Yard. Slight shift in your choice of adjectives there, then. And there you have it. Well, Madam Two Spells? Well, what? It was me who contacted the police and demanded that someone come in the first place. He's clearly fatigued. He is sound asleep. Then what's the tag showing a price above three pence? No doubt the price tag of the muffler, which the old Bobby purchased recently at a local market. And I presume you've observed the scarf tied around his arm. Does that not strike you, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, the secret sign used by detectives to show that some criminal activity is currently underway. Of course, because, as you know, there has been such criminal activity happening here. As you deduced from the very beginning, detective. So it would seem that we finally arrive at the truth. The waxwork of the especially ruthless killer from the special exhibit has been kidnapped. And Scotland Yard are already investigating. But the model's whereabouts remain a mystery. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. Still a mystery. All sorts of people visit my museum here. Men and women, young and old. Sometimes they drop in just for a short time on their way back from the pub. I welcome them all. But if anyone tries to damage my exhibits, I do not take it lightly. Anyway. Your great deduction was even more enchanting than I had been led to believe. It was a pleasure, my dear madam. I am gratified that you enjoyed the spectacle. As for your rough customer, I have no doubt he'll regain consciousness shortly and return home. What concerns me more is the waxwork from the special display, if it was indeed genuinely abducted. Yes, tragically, it was. And I would ask you to recount to the events that's surrounding the stolen waxwork in as much detail as possible, if you please. Very well. But after I've told you what I know, I must insist that you return to your work. The talents of a great detective could be put to better use, I feel, but as you wish. Tell us more about the stolen waxwork, please. It was some days ago now, when I came in here one morning. I immediately noticed that a waxwork was missing from the special exhibit in here. It is your most prominent display. 
So that's why the curtains were closed. And I found the ransom note in its place. The culprit must have broken in during the night and taken it then. So this waxwork that was stolen. It was a model of some horrible criminal, I suppose. Of a particularly horrible criminal, in fact. The killer who left a more profound scar on society than any other, I would say. The Professor. Not a name I've heard of. So, Mr. Naruhoto, it seems the circle is complete. Sorry? The Professor case happened at around the time I was born, didn't it? Indeed it did, Iris. Ten years ago, a series of murders that rocked the capital. Ten years ago? Yes, at exactly the time. That Barrack Van Zeeks graduated from university, in fact. What? Sh surely he's not saying. It's the big event that changed Mr. Reaper's life. As you surmised, it was the Professor case. Who was this Professor, then? It was a series of gruesome murders that had all of London gripped in terror a decade ago. After five victims were killed, the man was arrested and put to death. Put to death. Well, that was weird. And now he's immortalized here in wax for all Londoners to admire and enjoy. Though, of course, he happens to be absent at present on account of the abduction. But I don't understand. How is all this related to Lord Van Zeeks? You must first understand, my dear fellow, why is it that the Professor earned such infamy? It was due to the victims he chose. Some of Whitehall's finest. What do you mean, Hurley? Those murderers by the Professor were some of the highest members of the British aristocrat aristocracy. Aristocracy, excuse me. Members of nobility, even royalty. It sent shockwaves of the country's administration. Members of the... Ah, wait, of course. What Professor Harebrain said. Lord Van Zeeks is from a family with noble blood. Oh, gosh. It was the fifth, vi fifth victim that led to the Professor's arrest. The last of the killer's prey was a young noble by the name of... Clint Van Zeeks. No, I don't believe it. Van Zeeks? I'm sure you could piece together the, res the rest for yourself. In the wake of his older brother's murder, the young Barrack pursued a career as a prosecutor, and eventually became the Reaper we know today. I had no idea Lord Van Zeeks had such a tragic past. Well, I'm afraid that's all I could say on the matter. For the time being, at least. After all, I have work to do. As a waxwork exhibit. I am afraid I shall have to excuse myself as well. Oh, yes, of course. It's It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Well, none of the predicted scenarios I've been analyzing involved you coming to visit me here. Oh. It's been too long, it really has. I'm delighted to see you, Barrack. It's been ten years, and here we are meeting in a prison of all places. I can't forgive myself for what happened to Mr. Asman. I just can't. I... I still can't believe it could have happened. Tomorrow, the court will decide. Yes. I have a young Eastern man acting for my defense. He seems reliable enough, though. It... it was an accident. A terrible accident. He... he assures me he can prove it. I must warn you. Oh, I know, I know. I've heard already. You're going to be prosecuting, aren't you? Yes. Since I returned to England, I've had lots of stories. Barrack, are you really... What? Never mind. I know that you have my best interests at heart. My friend is on trial. I wouldn't entrust it to anybody else. Of course, I fully understand. Thank you, Barrack. 
Until tomorrow, then, I'll see you in court. What happened to Ginny while you were gone? Nothing. Oh, thank God. Oh, went over there. It took almost exactly three hours to get to this point. <sighs> Alright, I'm not even- I'm not even reading the next line here. Uh... We're, we're done. Oh boy, that was rough. That investigation took two, took three hours. That whole, that whole spiel. All right, let me see where I am in the accolades. Yeah, great. That's how my energy is right now. Presenting the armband to Van Zeeks in episode three of the Great Ace Attorney. All right. Beat episode three. Examine the ladder. Okay, so I gotta examine the ladder again later. And then I have to... Examine the shovel at two different spots in this chapter later. And then this, I have to just read the thing later as well. Okay. Old style bird for this occasion. I think next stream, once I get to the next investigation spot, I'm gonna enable all of the... Uh... Actually, you know what? I might do it at the beginning of the trial. In fact, I might do it now. Do that now in advance. They stick, right? Okay. Because if I see all three of them, then I get an achievement as well. Alright. Cool. So that's another uh, another case and, and a chunk in the books here. So, very quickly again... Um, I'm going to be streaming the rest of Chapter 3 tomorrow and Tuesday. Hopefully, I'll finish it by then. I will not be here Wednesday the 20th, the Monday the 25th. 26th of April through May 3rd, I'll be playing uh, through Chapter 4 of Greatest Attorney 2, plus possibly two new, uh, two more uh, games, short games, if I have time. Um, and then on May 4th, I'll be not here. 5th to the 10th, I'll be, I'll be in Atlanta. And then once I get back, uh, and maybe I might not do it on the 11th, I might start on the 12th, I'll do the final chapter of Great Ace Attorney 2, and then normal streams will resume after that. That's all you really need to know. Um, yeah, it's a ladder, wait, is a ladder or staircase? Yeah, no, you get achievements for checking both of them. But, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you all for coming, I appreciate it, as always. If you want to watch more streams, check out twitch.tv slash team slash wildabandoned. Plenty of people streaming there right now. I, again, will be here tomorrow and Tuesday. Tuesday, I'll try to start early. Tomorrow, I'm going to be busy till 11. So, it may not start until the same time or later. But I'm hoping I could get, like, a little extra time in just to make progress in this case. What's the event on the 25th that I'm doing? Hold on. The 25th? That's PAX... Yeah, I'm doing PAX East this week in Boston. I'm leaving on the 21st, and I need the 20th to prep. So, I'm only streaming until Tuesday this week. Same with the week before uh, Freight Week in Atlanta. But when I come back this week, I'll also have this week to stream. So yeah. Thank you for coming. You all have a great evening. I am exhausted. Take care, and I will see you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>